Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout and today is March 6th and we attempt to stream for 12 hours. Straight. Uh, uninterrupted. Well, interrupted many times actually. I mean, we have so much stuff going on guys that we have printed out schedule sheets. Ken has a three ring binder notebook. I'm about 20 pages in in the three ring <laughs> binder. <laughs> uh, uh, so this is, uh, this is a serious deal. Uh, we have a lot of guests lined up. We have a lot of contests. Uh, well, we have several contests with lots of prizes to give away. We don't really have uh, a stated goal at the end of this thing other than to make it through uh, until midnight Eastern time when we get to do this. So we're going to do some, uh, some gaming. We're going to interview some interesting people and even Tom Peterson. Um, uh, my favorite part, the thing I'm really looking forward to the most here is the Steam Controller Challenge that we have where Ken has to play me in Counter-Strike. And we still haven't figured out if we can do this one-on-one -on -one or if there are going to be other people on the server. And we, there's yeah, no I don't way know we if we need that. bots or not. Well, I just meant like, uh, like if it's a public match. Oh, I don't think that's fair. Uh, yeah, that's Everyone's better at Counter-Strike yeah, than if, both of us. The problem is, is if we don't do bots, it's just one-on-one. -on -one. The map is pretty big. It may be a while... Build tension. <laughs> Build tension. Where Steam or Ken S uses Steam controller, and I get to use a regular old mouse and keyboard, and he somehow thinks he's actually still going to do to do better than us. Um, so uh, if, if you're just kind of signing up, or you're just figuring out that like you saw went to the page and you saw the live stream was on, if you go to pcper.com/sol. Uh, which stands for streaming out loud, by the way. For now, it sound, stands for that. <laughs> for now, it sounds like if it stands for that. Later in the show, it may stand for something else. But uh, streaming out loud, pcpro.com slash sol, uh, and you will find a list of our segments. You'll find a list of our guests. Actually, I can show it to you right here. Um, you'll see a list of the prizes that we're going to give away. Here we go. Yeah. Sweet little logo. Uh, you can see our list of, uh, of, of hardware being su supplied by EVGA, AMD, Corsair, Logitech, MSI, OCZ, Storage Solutions, uh, and an idea of what the schedule should look like through the end of the stream. That's the theory, at least. So uh, we'll have the chat open as well uh, on pcpro.com slash live. If you want to go there, you can get the, the chat details. Um, so I'll have the chat open here. Um, I probably won't be watching as much as other people just because I'm moving around and doing the interviews and kind of being on the camera, but I'm trying to keep an eye here. Uh, yes, thank you. Ryan always has the best t-shirts. I, I, I probably five minutes of my morning was sitting there looking at my closet trying to pick the t-shirt. So the Hawaiian print Stormtrooper face, Stormtrooper helmet seemed like the one to go with. Wait, you don't have wardrobe changes? Oh, I didn't. Yeah, I forgot to bring all of my other wardrobe shots. So when this, when the GAC starts flowing, I'm just gonna have to wear that shirt uh, uh, to the end. So or water starts dripping from the ceiling. Right. Yeah, we've got it's it's a double dare set up in here. Actually, if you can see throughout the the rest of the office. So what we're also going to do is we're going to 3D print something, uh, and I think the deal here is we're not going to tell you what it is. You just kind of have to figure it out as we go. So if you look. It be, yes. Yeah, we don't want to say it out loud, right? So if we switch to this camera, do you want to switch to that, that camera shot? We have this camera. Nope, not that one. That one. Then we'll check in on periodically. We're going to go ahead and start the thing. Make sure the laptop screen is out of the shot so they don't cheat. It's out of it right now. Um, and uh, you're going to have to guess. <laughs> guess what, what it is we're printing. So is that all loaded up? It should be... Yeah, it's warming up right now. It's warming up I a little bit. I should have pre-warmed it, but right now. preheated it. That's all right. We've got... Uh, we're already way ahead of schedule now, as he turns out, as he looks at his, at his schedule. Um, so people have asked in the chat room, how are we going to give away our prizes? I guess I can go ahead and, and, and give away that URL. Sure. Um, the first giveaway will happen during our Rocket League stream. Um, which is where people will see how bad I play Rocket League. Uh, so if you go to pcpercom slash SOL contest, again, streaming out loud, SOL contest, uh, you can go there and sign up. So we have a gleam.io page, uh, which basically um, allows you to submit an entry through several different methods, be a subscriber on YouTube, um, sign up for our live newsletter, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, all those types of things, answer a question, um, all that stuff will be, uh, will be part of it. And I knew those Facebook notifications were going to show up on this screen. Um, and what we'll do is, it, once you enter there, uh, we will draw winners throughout 
the day. I was going to say afternoon, but I really meant throughout the entire day. So, okay, we'll, we'll do that. So PCPro.com slash SOL contest. And uh, we, should be, we should be good to go there. Now, let's just go ahead and get started here because we'll talk with Sebastian as we kind of go through some of this. The, the kind of running build we have uh, is going to be a table PC. And uh, if um, you would, we need to switch a camera here for you, Ken? Yeah, we'll do that. So we're going to build a table PC. Leanne Lee, uh, do you remember which model we actually have here, Sebastian? I don't remember the model, the specific model. I don't model remember. Uh, a restart is scheduled at 1221. Postpone if it isn't a good time. I think I'll reschedule. Um, so we're going to do a Leanne Lee table PC build. We've assigned Sebastian this task. So he's going to be the one that is going to be forced to uh, set it up. We really don't. We haven't even opened the box yet. We have no idea what's going to be... Or even what's inside the box. Yeah, or, or even what's inside the box. It's just an Ikea desk. <laughs> it could be. Uh, I'm hoping, based on the size of it, that the table itself is set up, and all we have to do is really put the legs on it. Right? That's how a lot of tables do go together. Yeah. Legs on, yeah. on tables. You put the legs on the <laughs> top of it. It looks to be about this size table. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's, yeah, sure. Um, so what hardware do we have here that we're going to, to use with it, just so we kind of have an idea of what people... We have the Gigabyte SoC Force, which is a... Uh, this is the motherboard that Alan used to test the triple M.2 SSD stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So in addition to those, uh, uh, which will be unused M.2 slots in this build, <laughs> uh, it offers a DDR4 memory. We have 16 gigabytes in here, and of course the 6700K right, right. unlocked Core i7 processor. And the heaviest GPU I've ever held in my life. This is a Zotac GTX 980 Ti. Yeah, I forget what the what the moniker. Let me let me look at the back of it here. Hydro something. It is made? the Arctic Storm. Damn, so close. Arctic Storm. I'm, this weighs about the same as like a gallon of milk, I would say. Okay. So this would destroy most it PC has, cases. It has it air more... cooling and water cooling yes. integrated on it, right? We're just going to be using the air cooling. It does have uh, grommets. Yeah. Or not grommets. What are these called? Uh, barbs. barbs. There we go. Thank you. I don't water cool. I don't either. Usually. So, but yes, this giant right. v, uh, video card. And we have a uh, Seasonic 650 watt PSU, which should be enough. Oh, yeah. For a single GPU build, we have a H100i GTX liquid cooling solution and a Corsair Neutron XT SSD which is probably all we need for the build. Yeah, I mean, the purpose here is not to, like, run a bunch of benchmarks on it. We just want to actually see you build a machine inside a table. And then install SteamOS on it and start gaming. <laughs> uh, okay, we can, be, we can be unrealistic yes. if you want. Hey, there are several games. So let's, let's take those components it. off and move those safely to the side somewhere, I guess. So, so the carpet? Actually, or, yeah, or maybe on one of the, the, the I don't know, somewhere. Be you know, creative. We can't... I can't tell you what to do. We can't, we can't plan everything. Gosh. Man. So I have 12 hours to build this, is what you're saying. No, according to my schedule, you have, uh, let's see. Until 5 p.m. You have until 5 to finish. Okay. <laughs> you don't know how confident you sound. I'm going to be honest with you. You know how long I take on case reviews? Uh, yeah. Probably. Probably. Yeah. So it sounds oh, like okay, the yeah. 3D printer is going now. So Let's can, check in on that. Yeah. Let's check in on the 3D printer. Is that actually moving? Oh, look at it go. Look at that. Look at that filament. We, uh, we ran some, we did some more like, actually, ironically enough, we can't show it on the camera because we're using it, but we 3D printed a housing for the GoPro that is being used to, to capture the uh, 3D printing. It's actually going on, right? As it turns out, a lot of 3D printing is just 3D printing stuff so you can 3D print more. <laughs> that seems... Can you 3D print accessories for your 3D printer? Like, Oh, yeah. That's yeah. a gigantic thing. 3D printing ways to improve your 3D printer yes. is kind of... Can you 3D print a 3D printer? Yes. Yeah. Mostly. Some stuff. Well, I mean... Like you, you can't 3D, 3D print, print a nuclear reactor. The coolest things I have seen 3D printed so far are ones that have um, some kind of threading in them that just create like little toys, or, like where things spin inside of things that don't really do anything otherwise. Like a gyroscope. Kinda, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know how our the resolution of that printer we have for Monoprice is compared to what you would need to get that type of stuff done, but. Um, so this is it. This is it. We're starting. We're going. You got a question? You don't. Okay. 
Um, so uh, one of the things that we are going to promote throughout the stream here, and I want to make sure everybody understands this upright, or up front rather, not upright. If you're upright, that's fine. If you've been drinking, that's fine too. Um, the goal here is to show you guys what we can do, uh, what our goals are, uh, how wonderful we do uh, streaming in general, I guess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Which is not being proven at this moment. Not yet. Not yeah, yet. yeah. I mean, look, we're streaming, we're going, things are happening. It's live on the internet. It's live television on the internet. So uh, uh, we have a Patreon going at patreon.com slash PCPer. You can see here, I did bring it up on this screen. And look, there's a picture of, uh, of the people that you've seen so far and heard from, except Josh. Josh is like doing a thing somewhere else. And he'll be he'll be joining us this evening for some racing. He didn't catch the train. He didn't he didn't catch the train. Uh, also, I just think he was finding a way to sneak out of not having to be on for twelve hours straight, which I can understand, I guess. So the goal here is is we are asking our audience, we're asking our readers and our viewers and our fans to kind of directly support us uh, through a recurring monthly donation. That's key. It is a recurring monthly thing. So uh, if you go to patreon.com slash PCPer, you have some options there. We have some, some goals in mind, some milestones, I think is what they call them, uh, that you can see at the bottom of the page. Um, we share some people who support our Patreon at $3 a month or above get things like the uh, post show of our podcast that we record every week. You know, the post show that if you watch it live, you get to participate in. But if you can't watch it live, uh, we post it on YouTube, but we only give the link out to people who are on our on our Patreon page. Uh, we want to do a mailbag show, which is like a, just a weekly Q&A session that we do directly with uh, our readers and fans. That's like at a specific milestone. And actually, it's not really on that list, but I think after lining up all these interviews today, I would like to be able to do an inter interview style show once a week as well, where we bring on a guest, uh, you know, ask them some questions about what their life is, and then whatever important topics happen to be going on Could you put like a during the week. backdrop behind you? A late show. Put like a big, like a moon yeah. behind us too. Yeah, and then have like a table mic that you're not actually using. Uh, with a, your lab dog. Maybe a mug. Yeah. A mug on A mug with pens. just water. Or, or something yeah. else. Um, who had the, uh, it was a Conan O'Brien that had the, the cup of uh, Eisenhower? Nobody? Know. Nope. Nobody knows? He had like an Eisenhower mug, I think. Huh. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if he wasn't allowed to take that to the, the Conan show with him. It was property of NBC. No, it was a mug. Oh. They had, like, pencils in or something like that. He didn't drink oh. from it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Conan. I think it was Conan. I think it was Conan. I don't know. So uh, that's kind of the thing we're, we're, we're promoting throughout. That's why you see the URL kind of down here below the whole time when we're, when we're, we're doing random things. Um, so far, uh, what are you looking at here, Sebastian? Uh, I'm got? just seeing what's in the box. What's in the what's box? What's in the box? And is, is the uh, DK... Q two X. Let me let me let me let me look that up real fast. DK Q two X. Yes. All right. Let me look that up so we get an idea of what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> it's Where's finished. the fun in that? There's a high resolution shot right here. Yeah, I don't really. It looks like a pinball machine to me it's more than does, anything yeah. else. Yeah. Uh, so we'll go ahead and load this guy up. There you go. So here it is. The DK Q two aluminum computer desk. So these things on the side are, they're not handles. They're actually for, like, hanging your headphones. It's for playing and your, foosball. It's, <laughs> it's a slash foosball table. Right. This is for, like, hanging your headphones and stuff, right, I assume? Cable mess. It doesn't look super big. I guess that, I guess that makes sense. What, are the, what the desk dimension? You know, yeah, if your computer is inside the desk, you need less desktop space, I guess. You just need yeah. a monitor on top. The dimensions are and 1 meter by uh, 0.7 meters. Otherwise known as a thousand millimeters by seven hundred millimeters, <laughs> well, or a hundred centimeters by seventy centimeters. Isn't the metric system amazing? It really is. It is adjustable it is. feet. So those legs for look, leveling. Those legs look like the legs we have on our uh, our what do we call that? It's like a three thousand dollar optics leveling table <laughs> that we use for three D printing. And actually, it was used for even, as a storage table even more and recently. And aluminium that. construction. Oh, those are way lighter than the legs on that desk. Oh yeah. So the idea here is no okay so there's there's some stuff that has to happen. I was gonna say like this could be rotated so that any direction could be no, but no you probably no. don't. That also just looks like eighty twenty steel. Maybe. <laughs> I would hope this. I'd read those directions. We don't want it to fall apart when all those components are in there. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. That's probably not gonna work. 
I thought you supposed to be good at building furniture, Sebastian. It's not Ikea. He doesn't... <laughs> it's not Ikea. He's, he's fundamentally at a disadvantage. What do you think I, Ikea would call this desk? What, what name would it have? <laughs> Those instructions have no stick figures in them. I know. They're, they're too easy to follow. They may not be that easy to follow. They're, they're probably still in a lot of Chinese, but we'll see. So, let me guess. Four legs? So far, three. Yeah, there's the fourth one. Four legs, <laughs> two metal parts, and then I think pretty much the completed desk top. Yeah, that's that's my hope is that the rest of it is kind of like building the desk might be like a ten minute enterprise. I, let's hope so because I, you know, I, I've seen some. I think we watched a video of this, like somebody putting this together already, like the Lee and Lee official video, and I think the whole like motherboard tray and everything comes out too. So. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Um, somebody has a question from Twitch. What are they going to do with the desk? Give away or directly into Ryan's basement? <laughs> well, if it went into Ryan's basement, nobody would ever use it, is the first thing. I went into my basement. Uh, actually, I guess I've been in my basement every day for the last week or so because my furnace is out, so there's that. Uh, Something else can fit in your basement. I've got, actually, I've cleared out a lot of space in my basement. Uh, Thank you. Do you think maybe your furnace isn't working because there's no air for it to breathe? No, I think the furnace isn't working because it wants to cause me pain and suffering on the day that I'm supposed to do a 12-hour live stream. Hey, but you're not home. Well, that's true. Perfect day. And I sent my wife and child to Columbus so that they don't have to deal with a house that's 59 degrees inside and probably still dropping. Well, it's sunny out today. I'm hoping it, I left all the windows, like the blinds well, open. So it, it's supposed to be like 53 today. So. Is it? Okay, so it'll, it won't have an issue then. Uh, I don't know. I've had There's several people asking about this shirt. I have no idea. I'll text my wife and ask her. Because she bought me this shirt. She made it. No, well. She quilted it. I would like to say. Uh, she used be, an old shower curtain. Actually, be pretty the, cool. Uh, Stormtrooper look. If it was like. If it was like. Taking a. Like. Uh, what, what, what do they call that? that mask? Like quilting, I guess. Oh, where yeah. like if it had the actual material over it, it was a mask. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. I will, I will, for all of you people on the stream, I will ask. I will inquire with the wife where she got this T-shirt. Although maybe I don't want to tell you, so I'm the only one that has it. This could be like the QuakeCon shirt that I wear this year. You can't use the QuakeCon. Like, you've already, you've already blown I've your load on it. this shirt, I've wasted so to speak. It. Mm, figuratively. <laughs> literally. I've wasted it. We, yeah, somebody says maybe we 3D printed the T-shirt. That's possible, too. You know, right now, this Ooh. case looks like a giant full tower case. It's like those old server cases. I like it. I don't think we can't hear it. Can you turn it towards the camera a little bit more? It's going to be hard to see because it's so dark inside. Yeah. 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 It's, it's kind of conventional if you're looking at it. Let's see. Is that camera on? No, not, not currently. Okay. I like, see, I'm already a fan because you can see here, this is the PCI Express, like, riser part so that, you know, yeah. that, that plugs into the motherboard. You can put your video card out there. I like, the, I, I like that idea. Plus, oh, you'll be able to see fans. the front of it. Yeah, I know. And on both sides. Comes with eight fans. Hopefully they're quiet. I was going to say, this might be loud. <laughs> Hopefully. These are Hopefully uh, they're quiet. not PWM fans. I don't know. There might be a fan controller, though. I think there is. I don't know. I we'll there see. Was. I we'll know. see. Pretty light, though. As big as this is. Hey, Lee and Lee, what are also, they Also, I'm very strong. <laughs> <laughs> Lee and Lee, what are they known for? Uh, Aluminum chassis. Yes. Right? <laughs> Aluminum, light, airy. If you will, I don't like everything they do is boring. <laughs> Even when it doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, Ryan, I'm going to go ahead and direct you. How about you get well, set maybe. up for the next thing? All right, I, we're we'll... going to leave here. We're going to leave Sebastian on on camera here to uh, uh, probably hurt himself. Pro probably. If you start to bleed, we don't really have a first aid kit here. Just so you know, <laughs> there's a lot of. Plastic and just, packaging. I just can... so you know, we got we got gaff tape. You want to mute me so that I unplug this? <laughs> yes, yes, I do. I thought it was more apropos to just cut you off when you said you want to mute me. You want to mute me? This shit, guys. Yeah, it's like I probably should have thought this through a little bit more, but... What can we do to turn that camera on? I'm going to do that right now. Okay. <laughs> that way we can leave that one on, yeah. Yep. Cool. How, what do you think about those directions, Sebastian? Uh, 
trying to decipher them. <laughs> I'd start with step one. I'm not accustomed to having to read directions for cases. <laughs> I need to locate whatever item B is. Yeah, as it turns out, we like phones. You know, the world is going mobile, Ryan. Have you seen Car Chase on uh, the Slingshot, the ES 3.1 test? No. It is very, very good looking. It's like PS3 level graphics. PS3 level? What year did the PS3 come out? 07. Was it really that late? Okay. It's like, yeah, because it it, 360 was 06, I think, and it was the year after. It's hard to get any kind of playable frame rate on that, though. Yeah. Well, you could have an NVIDIA Shield to which they're porting PSP games now. PSP? It was like Liberty City Stories was the last oh, release, no. I think. Which did come out on PS3, but you know. It's still a PSP game. If Sebastian can't finish it, we just throw it away. Yeah, oh yeah, that's right. I forgot. Oh, is mine unmuted yet? How about now? Yep. All right. So, yeah, I, I forgot to answer that question. What do we do with the case? Um, it, we'll, we'll probably do a review of it first. Bigger. Um, and then... You need bits? Oh, all right. That. He's got them. We'll probably do a review of it, and then... I, I don't know if this is something that Lee and Lee needed back or not. I think it would make a cool set table. Yeah, but we have they a want lot it of back because I mean I can't strip every one of the screws while building it. <laughs> well, no, that is they have their own that. screw. Yeah. I mean that's their problem. They can tap it in, again. right? Yeah. I mean that's that's their issue at that point. Um, Aluminum is soft; it might get dented. <laughs> Repacking it to ship will be a nightmare. Eh, let's just say that they don't want it back. Let's just. Say, I, I mean, it would make a good set to uh, a set. Machine, but we have a lot of set machines. It's a little machines. small for that. Yeah. How for long it. could you hold in a day by just repeating every one of their questions back to them? You want it back? <laughs> you want it? Do you, you want us to ship it? Look, back? I really need you to not give away all of my secrets, oh, okay. Sebastian, on the air because <laughs> I think I told uh, Ken this once, maybe Alan too. Like one of my things is like when I have like twelve emails that like need response that day, and I'm like really busy. Uh, <laughs> what I will do is I will kind of bounce bounce it back to them. Like, hey, what about this, this, and this? Like, just ask some random questions. Even if I already know the answer to that question. Am I... No. <laughs> do you hear game audio, yeah, Ken? Oh, okay, good. Do you hear some game audio, Ken? Yeah, I did. I do not. I would like it's to like hear some. I will work on that. Okay. I hope Rocket League uses copyright-free music. I'm sure it's fine. You turn well, off the music, please. <laughs> and the settings. You want me to so we don't get taken down from YouTube, but potentially. People, people live stream games all the time. Just... Let's go for it. <sighs> Whatever. <laughs> this is my protest. Okay. Duly noted. Alan, if you tap in that field, it should auto-complete. No? Not the, uh, Are you getting music now, Ryan? Not the email. No. It's Q. The username is just PC Per.
Yeah, I bet if you type, try to type it in. Yeah, try to auto. Okay. Oh, yeah. How about now? Mm. What? We inadvertently made plumbers crack cam. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, everybody, everybody's got their own deals, right? We're going to try to set up here and get the... Oh, oh, I hear it now. Great. Sebastian, you're now a qualified shipyard worker. Nope. Is it just... It's a very thick cable. The issue. Everybody's got a tissue. Uh, yeah, yeah. No. But the crack is technically absence of tissue. Oh. No. Just say. I hear it like now. Well, is something loose? No, it's the cable. That. Now I hear it. You Just might. don't touch it, I guess. If when it goes out, well, we have to have it because I'll have to do yeah, an interview there. I know, we there. have to have it. I'm just trying to think of a solution. I don't know. Ask Alan. He's good at that type of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, Jerry rigged this. <laughs> so that's what I got going on right now. Oh, that's impressive. Thank you. <laughs> that's... I this is a drug-free stream, guys. I'm sorry. I don't even know how it's working right now, actually. Don't touch it. Is it working? Yes. Okay, well, then I'm, I'm not going to touch it. <laughs> Um, also, what we used to say with the reactor plant on the subway. Don't touch it. It's you definitely shouldn't touch a reactor plant, I feel like. Yes. Especially if it's working. Especially if it's working. <laughs> Don't even look at it. Funny. Oh, man. So, okay, I have the answer on my t-shirt now, guys. You're going to be very disappointed in the answer. <laughs> Hawaii. Hot topic. You're going to be very... Uh, Coles. I'm getting everybody else back to me, too. Okay, that's fine. Okay. We will fix that. Uh... The answer is J.C. Penney's no. at Christmas. <laughs> so good luck with that one. I don't know what to tell you. Except the answers also included the Finger Hut catalog. That's right. High Tech Joe is glad that we didn't we didn't see the thong. That thong, just them. Which is true. Which is true. Yeah, sorry guys. I don't know what to tell you. Someone found out on Amazon and linked it in the chat. So. Oh, did they really? Mm -hmm. I can't tell if I'm happy or sad about that. You're not hearing me back anymore, are you? I am not. Cool. All right, so... Uh, hey, Ryan, I got this installed. Rocket League? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't okay. Know if you want another player. Yeah, sure. Absolutely join Here, in. Here, let me give Alan a mic. Hey, have a mic. Have a mic. Yay. Um, I can create a private match? No, we want to do a... Do like a 3v3, but match up. Yeah, let me... Are you online already, Alan? I'm uh, watching it right now. Okay. Create party. Mm, mm. Oh, yeah, that t-shirt is there. 22 bucks, that's a pretty good deal. Is it like... What kind of t-shirt is it? Like an American pair of soft... No, it's, t it's a t-shirt I like. Oh. So it's rough. I like Hanes beefy tees. No. You like sandpaper t-shirts? I, I like them to be like the 65, stronger. St cotton, yeah. Cotton. I like stronger, like stiffer cotton shirts. You're like the worst person ever. I like. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if I wanted to feel, if I wanted to feel like a nice, like uh, satiny finish on me, I'd wear women's underwear, right? So uh, if I, I'm a I, man, I have no idea. I like clothes. how there's a th that's the dividing line. It's either like a really <laughs> crappy, scratchy T-shirt or women's underwear. Right. Yes. I think these are. This See, is, this, this is like a nice, right soft, 100% cotton. It's like wearing women's underwear. Are you wearing a blouse, Ken? That sounds like a blouse. <laughs> Invite. All right, so if anybody wants, I don't know if anybody else can just join us. I no. Uh, hey, I see. Is that Jeremy in there? Let's ask Jeremy. I didn't know he was awake. I didn't know Jeremy was awake either. Why is he awake? How do you the stupid Steam overlay thing? Uh, I don't think you can in this game, but I I, I invited you. Did you shift get an tab, invite, Alan? Oh, is it Shift Tab? Yeah. Alan, do you have your mic on? Uh, working on it. Okay. It's underneath the battery cover. It is, so you don't accidentally trigger it. It's on? Uh, it's the, there's a mute switch. On the top. On the very oh. top. Yeah, okay. Uh, there we go. Now yeah. I'm sending something. Okay. Alright. 
Now, this is like my first time actually sitting down and playing Rocket League. That's unfortunate for you. It is. All right, so Jeremy's on board. You should probably not play against me. We're going to be on the same team. Okay. Sorry. You're going to bring him down. Oh, Jeremy's not on there. What uh, <laughs> What do I got to do to join the thing? Uh, I, I will send you an invite. I think. Invite. Jeremy says it's breakfast time where he's at, so... Oh, look at that. Back to the future car, Ryan. That's right. Be jealous. Where'd he go? I don't see on there. Jeremy. I don't see him in there. Here, we'll have Arbiter in there, too. Video. Hey, this isn't doing too bad for 4K. And on your 750 Ti? Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Is that Jeremy's car with the Chinese star stuck in the Oh uh, No, that's Arbiter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Where is he? He says his invite died. Uh, how about now? All right, we'll give we'll give Jeremy just a second here and see if he gets in. Can you do four on four? I guess before I, I is that a thing? You can I think it's four on four? I mean, I mean, look at these cars. I clearly have the best car. It's true. <laughs> All right. Is he in there? All right, I sent him one more. There he is. What the heck is that? <clears throat> I don't know, I can't even see it. Oh, there it is. Look at that. Oh, of course Jeremy would have devil horns. <laughs> oh, and a Canadian flag. Canadian flag. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of anything less Canadian than that. What is that green thing? That's oh, it's a Venus flytrap. It's a Venus flytrap. Of oh, course. Flytrap. And then of course you've got mine over here. It's pretty Swatch much the capacitor. best. All right, so um, what are the what? What is it? WASD. Yeah, and then uh, I wish you were capturing Alan's screen. <laughs> right, <laughs> right mouse button, uh, jumps, double jumps. Okay, what's left to turbo? Let's let's do a uh, we'll do a uh, a practice match here. Um, let's see. I want it to. I have. Let's make everything default. Is that good? Is that good? Okay. No, no, no. Let's do... Yeah. All right. How do I start it? Back. Create match. Correct. I'm going to go to 88 miles an hour. I'm joining blue, everybody. Oh, no. Are you guys not... No. Wait, no, none of you are in here. What do you mean? Are you in this game? Nope. You Didn't did start that wrong. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. It still shows us all together on this. Yeah, thing. I see it. Uh... Or can you not do know. a practice? Let's just with... do it. Screw it. <laughs> just jump in. No practice. Sure, why not? You apparently hit single player. Yeah, is there anything Just else now? to do here to that's, join? That's or? what they said. Oh. Let's see if I did single player here, too. Nope, you guys are all in here. Let's screw it. Let's go. <laughs> all right, Alan, don't screw it up. Uh, okay. What team are we? We're orange, the color of your car. Okay. Ooh, I should turn V-Sync on. Nah, man. Real PC games tear. It <laughs> oh no, let's not terrible. get into that yet. <laughs> that will actually come up pretty soon, <laughs> as it turns out. Yeah, get that first interview in. Mm -hmm. mm. 
Left mouse button is your turbo, Alan. Right mouse button jumps and then double jumps. You hit when you hit it twice. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, we suck. <laughs> it's not about winning or losing. It's about playing the game. And uh, I was out of what? turbo, so I couldn't catch up. Oh. oh! You heard me. You were wrong. <laughs> it's not. Good job, Arbiter, keeping on D. They wonder where the ball cam is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sebastian will have that up later, too. <laughs> oh, go. <laughs> Oh, I had that one. I think your mic is falling a bit, Sebastian. Might want to talk to me. Can you hear me now? Yeah, okay. Now you that I'm muted. not muted. Okay, just making sure. Oh, okay. Arbiter keeping us in the game. Go! Nice. <laughs> Arbiter always bails you out in yeah, online general. games. That's why I always invite him into these matches. <laughs> First touch. That sounds weird. <laughs> First time you said that out loud, huh? According to my lawyer. No! Where'd the dang ball go? Oh, there it is. You son of a biscuit. Oh, where's the ball? Yeah, it's near the goal. Oh! No! Wow, how'd that get in there? I want to see that replay. I'm pretty sure that guy has dollar bills come out whenever he hits the ball. Somebody got it in. Oh, that's his. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I managed to finally punt it towards the goal, and then they got there it in. There you go. How oh, nice. Oh. Damn it. All right. Our burger went out. I'm going to play D here. If you know what I mean. No. Oh no! Oh, I hear that 3D printer going. Yep. Still building the raft, I think. It's like an eight hour print, I think. I wonder, but there's gotta be like variants based on the printer itself, right? But it knows the print settings, like the feed rate and stuff when it's calculating uh, that. Because okay. you set all of that in the slicer. Go orange It's been team. fairly accurate every time. All right. Except that last time, that print on Friday was oh, no. kind of off. Come on, Al. I'm pushing it. You like driving stuff? With the keyboards? Uh, <laughs> I tried to play this with a racing wheel, to be fair, and it does not work. Oh, damn. I couldn't even imagine. Did you see that? I this. had the, uh, the, the flames for my tire tracks, as well as the spinning license plate. You would. <laughs> You're right, I would. And only Ryan drives a car with a keyboard. Now he tells his car to drive itself. Right. Yeah, so like, do a keyboard shortcut. I did a uh, reset. I did do a test Skype call with uh, Tom yesterday from my car driving to Lexington. <laughs> There's a camera on you while you're driving? No, I was using my phone. One uh, minute. That sounds illegal. Officer, the car was driving itself. Oh, no. No, I'm not 3D printing a raft. A raft is the support on the bottom of a 3D print. Yes, uh -huh. look at Arbiter saving our ass again. 
printing something way more exciting than a raft. Yeah, if you guys haven't played this game before, you really should. It's really fun. Look at that. It's soccer with cars, which sounds dumb, turns out to be pretty awesome. <laughs> All right, go for it, Al. Holy Jesus. Is it like Twisted Metal? No. No? It is literally soccer. You don't have weapons. Do they throw, like, the other cards? They're different color-coded cards? Yeah, but, like, they all act and behave the same. Like, there's no... I said cards. So like... like a yellow card and a red card? Yeah. No, there's none of that. <laughs> That'd but be you funny. Can... But you said it was soccer? But you can oh. run into people so close. at full speed and blow them up. Oh, okay. It's, there's really nothing soccer-like about it, except there are two goals and... A ball. A ball. Look at that like, shot! Oh, yeah! <laughs> Arbiter coming through. That was freaking Look, Watch awful. this shot. It's from our own goal. He was playing defense. <laughs> Look at that Ooh. guy. Oh, that guy's going to feel real bad about that. Yeah. At the end of the buzzer. That was like a quarter second Look at these achievos the I got. Minute Sweet to win it. achievos, bro. Drops in the bucket. Look at that. Oh, I unlocked the money rocket trail. All right, let's play another one. What time is it? You got to stay on schedule. I'm keeping an eye on it. You got plenty of time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got lots of what, time. What are we doing? Are we voting for rematch? Uh, uh, I mean, sure. That's the quickest way to get us back in there. So close. One more vote. If you guys are, are just joining in, again, uh, pcper.com slash SOL describes the event. Streaming out. Streaming out loud, sorry. Right. And if you, you vote. Want to, what? I did vote. Oh. Somebody else didn't vote. Wait, it, does, it says I didn't vote, does it? Ready. There we go. How about that? Um, PCPer.com slash SOL contest. You can go there and enter in. And uh, I think after our next match, I'll, uh, we'll do a giveaway, our first giveaway set, um, which will be for... An AOC FreeSync monitor and an MSI Thunderstorm mouse pad. So stay tuned. Whoa, stay tuned for that. And of course, PC per or no, patreon.com slash PC per. Oh, I can't believe I Oh, I didn't miss that. Okay, good. If you want to see us do more really dumb crap like this in the future, that's our goal, I, I guess, in life. And if you give enough, you can really kind of tell us what to do. You can control us. <laughs> Sebastian, for sure. I'm yeah. easily bought. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't even take a lot. I was going to say a oh, million dollars, but Arbiter probably on fire. far less. It's a good thing he's on our team. Look at that, because he actually even bounced it to himself. He must play this a lot. <laughs> he definitely plays it more than us. Let's put it that way. Because, I mean, that's pretty good. Your goal, Alan, is to bounce it to the middle. Well, I'm <laughs> trying. That's fine. I'm just saying. Gotta find the thing You want to center it. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Too low. I bounce it somewhere. Oh. Good job, Arbiter. Oh, he's going to score again. He is just like... He's doing pretty good. He's doing pretty good. That Chinese star must give him some kind of bench. <laughs> Surprised it hasn't popped the ball. I but. think the DeLorean should be winning all of these. And you can, by the way, like do backflips and stuff too, Alan. I know. I thought it was a good one, too. Come on. It's going. There it goes. Man, he... Like, I was going to at least get a shot off on that one. <laughs> good I job. managed to set up Arbiter. One yeah. time. 91 puts, kilometers per hour he was going. He puts the team this. on his back. He certainly does. 
<laughs> he certainly does. <clears throat> Oh! <laughs> Someone wants to know if you drive a Deloitte in, in real life. Yeah. Yeah, okay. They're making it look, look at that. now. So. Look at that. And it was on purpose. <laughs> Yeah, they it, are making, it wasn't your goal. Watch. That's pretty good. DeLoreans That's again. pretty good. And there was a good defense on it too, and it still made it in the corner. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that. <laughs> Gotta be proud of something. If we we have the new version of Wirecast, why don't you make that? Oh a instant yeah. Replay? Oh shit. Make that an instant replay. Again. <laughs> yeah, I'll get on that. Not a chance. Oh, it's going. Oh, I forgot about the. Th flying thing. Ken has that recalcitrant attitude of a true producer now. Not it's not happen. in my notes. I'm not doing it. <laughs> oh, can you please do this? <laughs> oh, no, oh, no, no, no. Good save. I've got the power. And the complex to go along with it. I have never been able to successfully fly in real life. I well, believe uh, and like do anything useful. Oh no. Oh God, no. Yes. Man. I almost screwed that up, but then I didn't. Yes, get it, Jeremy. Yes. That was all Jeremy. Well, and that guy. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, the guy in the blue kind of did that to himself, didn't he? I'm curious if people in the chat who are watching, what camera view do you prefer? There's the ball follow cam, or did they take that out, somebody said? No, no. So you can make the camera always follow the ball or the direction of your car. Uh oh. Oh yeah, they Scott mentioned someone we should have gotten. What's up? Should have got JJ. You're right. Didn't even think about it. Next time. Yep. People like to be disturbed on Sunday afternoons. You know, yeah. Just call them up. Exactly. <laughs> Hey, are you near a computer? Hey. <laughs> well, let's Put be honest. Pants. Odds are. It's JJ. I'm going to guess he's near a computer. Or at the movie theater. Those are the two places I know JJ ha has ever been. True. So at some point... We Is he a roller coaster guy, too, or am I misthinking that? I don't know. Oh, shit. We there could we, we could do a PC per staff ret retreat at Cedar Point. It's like halfway for... A little under halfway for Sebastian. Nice, good shot, Arbor. Don't like How long does it take you to get to Cedar Point? Oh. Huh? You don't like roller coasters? No. Oh, okay. So yes. My last yeah, time right. there, I went on two, and I said after the second one, never again. And I just sat Fair out enough. every ride after that. Give it a try. I did. I, I the first one, I just rode Blue Streak, which is the tiny, rickety old one, <laughs> well, that way was... over in the corner. And I was convinced I was going to die the entire time. <laughs> so then we went on. That's to... that's a sign of a good roller coaster. Yep. The next one was another like sort of beginner roller coaster but it's inside of a big warehouse thing and they turn all the lights off yeah so the sensation of flying around in the dark and Look being that. convinced that some beam Be was going to hit me in the head or something yeah. the whole time guys this is a little bit of a route Arbiter 7 to nothing I think we need to not do a rematch we need to find a new game we'll do another match we'll find some different people that aren't just going to cave uh well I mean, if we got Arbiter on our team... <laughs> Arbiter says confident. he only has 85 hours played on this game. <laughs> and just so people know, if you enter in for the contest now, you're entered in throughout the day. And you get yes, away. I guess. We don't have to tell him that. I don't know why we wouldn't. Because...
Yeah, they all. Oh, look, I got a skull decal. This glass panel is significant. I yeah, I it's so. as thick as like a glass cutting board. If you buy like a deluxe cutting board. Really? All right, I'm gonna exit to the wow. main menu. We're still gonna play another really match with you guys. Impressive. So hang on just a second. I'm just we're gonna do we're gonna do a giveaway real fast. Let me um, pull it's up. Thicker my than page a windshield. Here. Log into my Gleam here. So stay with us, Arbiter. If you leave, I don't know how we'll do. <laughs> we'll probably <laughs> suck. So. <laughs> Can you show him? What's his? Oh, he does. The glass is kind of out of frame. It's right there. here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you can see. Uh, Where's the camera? Yeah. There you go. Right here. Yeah. To this low camera in front of me. Yeah. Look how okay, thick. Fingerprints look on. how thick this glass is. It's that's like a quarter inch thick. Yeah. That's a significant piece of glass. It's pretty heavy too, like. I was thinking this was a very lightweight desk, but with this sitting on top of it, it's going to be pretty... Well, that's what they had to make it, make it out of aluminum. Yeah. All right, don't show my screen because it's got his location yeah, and everything. Well. <clears throat> so the winner of our first contest, which is the AMD AOC G2460PF FreeSync monitor and one of the MSI Thunderstorm mouse pads, which I actually really like. Those are the ones we got at CES. Yeah, they're nice, yeah, those are like, cool. aluminum yeah. ones. Yeah. 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 Um, so that is going to go to... Uh, Wyatt O. I'm not going to say his last name. Wyatt O. Uh, from Wisconsin. Fond du Lac. That sounds French. Wisconsin. Congratulations to you, Wyatt. You want a monitor and a mouse pad. Uh, monitor courtesy of AMD. Mouse pad courtesy of MSI, obviously. Uh, we have some commoner. We have some other mouse pads we're going to give away separately along the way as well. Uh, so we're just kind of getting into it. PCPro.com slash SOL contest is the URL for that. Um, and of course, before we get started here in our next match, oh, look at Alan cheating. How am I cheating? Got, he, he changed his car over, didn't he? I'm changing. It's pretty fun. Thing. That works dynamically, actually. Oh, does it really? I'm checking I mean, them all it's out. Updating. Let me see what other cars I have then, too. PCPro.com slash SOL for the description of the show, the 12 hour live stream we're doing if you are, uh, are just joining in. Uh, and then PCPro.com slash SOL contest to enter in for the contest. And now I'm going to go ahead and uh, tweet out that we are still streaming. How long have we been streaming, Ken? I want to know. You don't want to know. I do. <laughs> 53 minutes. All right. <laughs> Almost We're almost a twelfth of the way there. <laughs> Fifty-one minutes. As we continue, it will become Only more and more excruciating 11. for our viewers <laughs> and ourselves. Eight, mostly for the viewers. Two. Mostly, yeah. I think at some point we're just going to forget we're streaming and just start. <laughs> the, so behaving very inappropriately. So if I put stuff on the car, do you see it like immediately? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, hold on. Let me exit out of that. Yes. Now I see the train set going around your train hat. <laughs> what the hell? Oh, man. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right. I just tweeted that out. Uh, that's pretty awesome. There's a portal cake. Oh, man. Of course. Are you, uh, are you making sure? Are we still on YouTube? Like, we're not getting pulled down because of the music? I, I think we would notice if we got pulled down. There I worry about that, but yeah, I know. did too. That's why I told you to not. But I mean, the, the, turn off the music. YouTube gaming is a thing. Like they want people to stream gaming. Oh, I understand. Right, and our stream that... is sponsored by Tidal, so we've been streaming. <laughs> Life of Pablo. You know, Tidal. Our stream. Tidal I probably owe him money. Audio. I probably owe him money now that I said the title right. Our, our stream is being is sponsored by Kanye West. Yes. Yeah. Clearly. All right, uh, all right. Let me go into the garage real fast here and see what I do have. <laughs> so I'm obviously going to back to the DeLorean. It wasn't having a philosophical. <laughs> we weren't having a philosophical discussion about whether or not audio should be allowed. Just, I don't want to get kicked off. Oh, like, the DeLorean had very specific rules okay. yeah. that we were supposed to follow, and I don't want to make a net. Yeah, you can't you can't tarnish the DeLorean's look, man. I'm sure there's some. I'm sure there's a specific uh, license license for that. Let's see here. Check the freaking rocket on that thing. Oh, yeah. That kind of looks like a Batmobile. Can I drive that to work? Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to guess the answer is no. Right. Ooh, flamethrower pink. Ooh, there's the money one. You don't have to worry about tailgaters. <laughs> Just light them up. Data stream is cool. Let me, let me see back behind that. Data stream is a cool one. 
I like the ion green, but like, look at the money one, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> Make it rain. What hats do I? I do have a fez. I have a wizard hat. I have a portal cake. And then what do I got up here? A tennis ball. <laughs> Jolly Roger. All right, I yeah, I'm gonna go back to classic here. The sound effects are, are what do it for me. All right, all right, we're all still here. Find a match. Go. Apparently there are two Wyatts. Uh, Wyatt, if you are the winner, I will send you an email. You used your email to sign up through the Gleam.io. I will send you an email tomorrow. It won't be today. Uh, I'll send you an, everybody who is a winner an email tomorrow to get your full address and all that stuff, and then we'll start the shipments of things uh, on Monday and Tuesday. So. Ooh, look at this one. All right, you ready, Alan? Um, yeah. We still have Arbiter on our team? Okay. <laughs> oh, why did you do that? <laughs> they want to know if the next game is Civ Five. <laughs> Yeah, that's that, how we could have filled some time. We, we, we could have played we could have Civ done 5 12, for 12 hours of Civ Five. So this you is like a tutorial first, like how to play yeah. some of I your would preferred need that, yes. strategies. So, so this is really nerdy. But one Sunday, uh, we took a bunch of gaming laptops to a brewery and just played Civ Four. Ugh, oh, that is nerdy. That's not a nerdy thing. It's more of like a hipster thing. Too shit. I was pretty nerdy. <laughs> it's it's nerdy. Oh my god. Because we had to bring a switch. I deserve and hook everything together. Deserve, all right, now you've got some credibility. <laughs> I deserve and of to course, miss that shot. Of course, we had like a 24 port switch because no one had anything smaller. Was it and what did the brewery switch? say about this, by the way? It was a Sunday afternoon. There's nothing going on. We were buying beer, so they were pretty nah, happy. That's true. Then we ordered a pizza to the <laughs> to the brewery. What brewery were you Can adding then? Food? Rheingeist. Oh, no. Yeah, they don't have food there. They don't have food. They have, like, they actually just, like, have signs with the phone number of a pizza place nice. on a bunch of, on, like, on the walls and stuff. Michael yeah, yeah, yeah. Player wants they to do know a private match you. so our fans can play, too. Don't I can offer do that. food at a bar. I don't know how, how to people invite to hours people to it. It's true. If you are in Steam, I can do an invite after this match. We can do a private one. Somebody's asking for private ones so they can play against this. That seems fair. What's going to cost you, $800. Mad Tree does have pizza. Someone is in Cincinnati, apparently. Somebody in Cincinnati is watching the stream. Oh my god, I'm so bad. Yeah, buddy. Good job, Alan. Bing. Oh. There you go, Arbiter. I like to think that I was almost part of that goal. <laughs> Watch. Watch replay. I catch up. Here I come. <laughs> Look, I was almost part of that goal. <laughs> No, it's not really. I can't believe this 750 or whatever. I was going to say, you're still using a 750. <laughs> yeah. Alan, that's what you have in that machine? It's yeah. a 50 Ti. Is it 4K or do you have it down? No, it's running 4K. Oh. You heard it, guys. Yep. 750 Ti is all you need for, four, for uh, 4K gaming. Ooh, look at that gaming. save. If all you play is Rocket League. Uh, do you have everything maxed out? Uh, it's just defaults or whatever. Oh, it's, okay. I mean, it looks... I think everything's like default to high, kind of, on this game. Oh no! Oh, no! 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 I got it! I got it! You're muted, by the way. <laughs> Wait for it. That's right. This is no, streaming out loud. That means no muting. Yeah. Oh <laughs> damn it! No it's stream of consciousness. So how does that work if we have to go to the bathroom? You mute yourself and then you go to the bathroom. No. What is streaming out loud? 
<laughs> no, not that, that loud. That would be a stream. Listen, it's streaming. Oh, out. yes, very good. <laughs> not peeing out loud. Go, go, go. Booyah. Yeah, it's uh, there are no scheduled bathroom breaks. <laughs> so, yeah. We also don't have any meals scheduled in this. Now that I look at well, it, well, this, this is a that's what Alan's for. This is a dictatorship. That's why I brought like oh. boxes of Twizzler. I'm gonna order some Jimmy John's. I actually have a, a bag of snacks in my car. They can be really? some. Oh, nice. How I, about some snacks? See, see, I brought the six pack instead. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, wait, are you talking about yourself? Because that's no, that'd be pretty the conceited. Cave. Guys, I brought the six pack. Oh no! Nice save again. Oh, my bad, Arbiter. Screaming out loud. No, that's way later. Ah! Oh, shit. So you'll hear when Ken destroys Ryan in the uh, controller. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's great, because there are no expectations I'll win. Yeah, so. yours, because you're the one that made the challenge. My, my expectations don't last very long. Fair. Holy crap, I exploded. That means somebody hit you going full speed. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh. Uh, please don't be flipped over anymore. Thank you. Get some of this shit. All right, I'm going to try to fly and do something useful. <laughs> I did not fly, but it did look cool. Or I did fly. I didn't do anything useful, but it did look cool. It looked cool on my screen because I was you. driving under you. Thank you. But that's all you did. Unless you just kind of looked cool. Oh, I blew that guy up. That was helpful. <laughs> ah. That made me feel better, at least. <laughs> Sigabort. <laughs> what? <laughs> so I just typed in Sigabort into the chat. That was pretty good. All right. Yeah, so that, that should have been the acronym. We should have done a backronym. Exit to the main menu here. Yeah, um, you, you probably have time for one more. One more. All right. Yeah. So somebody wanted to do a private match. I don't know what that does necessarily. If I create a private match, does that mean only uh -oh. joinable by... I think, yeah, it's password. Oh, name okay. and password. <clears throat> so we'll make the name PC Perv. We'll make the password SOL. <laughs> All right, ready? Created. Oh, name no. PC Perv, password SOL. Doesn't that mean I need to leave this one? Um, yeah, you should oh, probably wait. go join it. <laughs> I don't know. Uh -huh. I guess maybe. I, yeah. know, I think if we're still on the thing. I guess I you are in the same party. So probably. Oh, are you? We'll see. Oh, the region is Asia SE mainland. Let me. That go. might be a bit of a mistake. Let me do that again. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Your pings would be a bit. Why oh, I can't change any of this. Hit cancel on the right hand side because you're still searching. Oh, oh, oh! I see, I see. U.S. East. That sounds better. PC per S O L. If you guys, <clears throat> looks like Arbiter backed out. Maybe you had to restart guys... the game. Oh, okay. So okay. See if you're in here, Alan. If not... Uh, it looks like I'm parked right next to you, but I don't... I'm gonna join Blue. Yeah, Malventano's reserved. Alright, there's some, there's some people in there. As long as I got the DeLorean sitting next to me, I think I'm good. How come you're not in here yet? It's... I think you... I think Alan has to go to still join, but it's saving a spot for him because you're in a party. Like, are you just at the main menu, Alan? Yeah. Go to join, like, join a match, uh, and then try finding his private match. Okay, hold on. PC per SOL. Only the party leader can search. So, since Ryan is the party leader... I'm already in your party, Ryan. I think that's... Yeah, but he's in the game. It's, it says it's saving a spot for you in the match, but... Uh, I don't know. Might be full now. I don't know. If you try to... Yeah. Oh, 
Oh, come on. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Yeah, it's full. Oh, no, I don't have Arbor on my team. <laughs> what, what, what's going to happen? You're going to lose? No, yeah. Probably. Let's see. Uh. <laughs> it was like a nine car pile up there. Get in there. Yeah. I'm guessing, oh, Jeremy just left. Uh, so I'm leaving the party. All right. Yeah, you can leave the party. This will, this will be the last match here, probably before we uh, take a break and get ready for our first interview, which will be Dan Baker from Oxide Games, makers of the nitrous engine that powers... Oh, wow. Powers Ashes of the Singularity. So that might be an interesting discussion. Found my first uh, translation issue. Oh, yeah? What's that? For side panels installation. It simply says, the hook to get into the hole. <laughs> seems legit. So I'll just follow the picture. <clears throat> that seems seems like a plan. Can I score? <laughs> legitimately. I think it was legitimate. I think it was legitimate. The 3D printer over here is uh, singing the songs of the people. It does that, yeah. Separate motors, man. Yes, Gola. Look at that. <clears throat> Look at those pings. Ooh, somebody's got 108. They must be in Southeast Asia. <laughs> Yes, Jeremy points out in the chat, if you think we're doing fun stuff and you'd like to see more fun stuff like this, consider supporting technical content, although this doesn't really count as the super technical type of content, at patreon.com. We, we discussed how a 750 Ti can play Rocket League at 4K. That's right, we did. Uh, and I'm playing it on a GeForce GTX 980 Ti at 25 by 14. <laughs> so That 750 Ti is using 768 CUDA cores. Which are of the Maxwell variety. Maxwell ah, 1.0 variety. I'm using is Maxwell 2.0. Oh. No, it was only 1.0 chip. Oh man, this is getting out of hand, boys. Oh, it was 7, 7, that was yeah. the first one, yeah. right? Yeah. <clears throat> the 750 and the TI? Yeah, it was that weird release. But will there ever be a 950 TI? That's what I want to know. Remains to be seen. At this point, I kind of hope not. It would be a disappointing release, mostly. Well, because everybody wants the 16 nanometer so, Pascal okay. stuff. What are they going to call their next line of GPUs? 1080, yo. <laughs> right? Like, they just. Well, they, they already started over once, right? You get like the sweet At least skateboarder once. in That's the window. That's not so sweet anymore. Who cares I, about skateboarding anymore? I'll, I'll Snowboarding? <laughs> Snowboarding, maybe a little bit more. I think, I think they're going to reset to something else. I bet they just call, just call it the GeForce. The GeForce One. The they'll G-Force. spell out the word One. You know, like iPad, GeForce. <laughs> Someone wants to know if there'll be a 950 Ti Boost. <laughs> My favorite NVIDIA card that I ever owned was the 560 Ti 448. Oh yeah, the 448 core. And I had the MSI with the twin frozer cooler and that thing. You could overclock... Some of the chips actually would go to a gigahertz, but I had mine at like 900 megahertz core, 950. Yeah. Loser. It was basically a 570 for way less money. Yeah, that's such a weird release. How about slightly fewer cores in a 570. How about the GTX 465? Ah! The, they cut down 470 that was a flaming pile and only had a, there was a couple month gap between the release. By flame pile, you mean literally because yeah. it was so hot? <laughs> 
Then they released the 460, was, which was the mid-range GPU to get, but the 465 was like the stopgap, a pared down 470. Dude, which, one was the, which one was like the core 216? The, that was like 280, wasn't it? No, there was no, the... 216 was the uh, four, 500 series, right? Or no, that was the... It was a 460, I think? Yeah, I don't think so. Oh, okay. We're talking about like 216 was, cores? Yeah, yeah. Oh, 216 cores. That yeah, like that's, the that's, GM... That's going to be like a 200 series, I think. Oh, was it the 260 and the 280? That someone must says, have been. Someone says the 260. Yeah. Okay. See? That's a very low That was like count. one of the first podcasts I was on. Oh. <laughs> and that was the discussion. I was like, and the, everybody was like, why did they just call it like the 270? Because <clears throat> it was like right between both. Yes, I, I do remember that. Yeah. Yeah. No goals. And then there's this split between GT and GTX, like where that happens arbitrarily in the product stack. Do they even have any GT products with 900 yet, or is it all GTX? I think there are GTs that are rebranded. For mobile, maybe. At least mobile. Commoner suggests that they'll call it... Oops, that's HH. All right. That is... Uh, what do we got here? We're, we're up on the time here for our first call. Yep. Maybe NVIDIA will have a contest so the fans will name their next GP. Yeah, that's exactly how NVIDIA marketing works. Uh, it was a commenter suggests that they might call it the X80. So sort of like they're doing the the like TX1 and the TK1, something like that, I could see. Yeah. That's a good idea. So but like, it's, got, well, but it'd be, it's, it'd but it's like, Pascal, so why would the they call P80. it PX80? PX80. <laughs> yeah, okay. PGTX80. Or think of they're, they're going to keep the GTX part. They're going to keep the GTX. P98X. I, I can't see them doing... P90X. P90X, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a dual right. GPU variant. Yeah, uh, you're on me. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and exit this game. <coughs> Thank well, this you for guys really for be hanging under out that and playing that. If you think about it, it what? should be under that one. Oh, that one. Yeah. That's, that's live. Yeah. Oh, that's why well, I mean, you can box. switch to it right now. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> it's it's pointing box. at the box. <laughs> All right, so uh, we've got just a couple minutes here, guys, and then we're gonna call our first interviewee. It sounds like he's ready if we want to go ahead and call him, because you're staying there. I'm staying here, yes. You're staying there. I am staying here. Uh, real quick, before we get in the buzz, we'll remind you, everybody, 12-hour live stream. We are now one hour and 15 minutes into it, which is practically done, guys. I mean, we're practically there. Right? Shut up. Right? PCPro.com slash SOL. You can find all the information there. Uh, PCPro.com slash SOL contest. You can go enter your name in uh, through various methods. Um, to uh, to sign up for the contest. Uh, and, of course, patreon.com slash PC per. That is kind of the uh, impetus behind today's stream, showing you the kind of things we can do. We'd like to do more gaming streams with our, with our viewers and fans. That would be fun if we had the capability to do that. We'd like to do more interviews, like the one we're about to do. We'd like to do more, like, live dumb stuff, like the stuff, uh, the table PC build that we're doing. Right there. Is it actually pointed at the... Is the camera pointed at it? Uh, well, let's see. Not particularly No, yet. just the carpet? We'll fix that. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, I guess if he's ready, and you're ready, Ken... Yeah, let's go let's ahead call, and Let's Dan call Dan call. up. See how this goes. And see how this goes. We didn't do a pre-call with Dan. Of course not. That'd be too easy. That's why we oh, cool. That. A sweet advertisement's popping up on Skype. That won't ruin <laughs> anything. <laughs> You know, if I could pay for Skype so I wouldn't have those ads, that'd be fine. All right. Uh... I don't hear him if I'm supposed to hear him yet. Yeah. Let's see here. What the Check our audio Oh, settings. I know what it is. Sorry. Bear with. Oh, that's an interesting... Oh, I know. Sorry. I'll just keep talking to myself. It's fine. Yes, you guys feel free to continue to play uh, uh, that game in the background while you listen in on our stream. Now our stream. we should hear Dan, I think. I do not hear Dan. Do you hear Dan? No. First technical difficulty of the day. <laughs> oh, that's... I don't hear the Skype. There's a lot of though. audio devices on this computer. There are. So, how about now? now Can you hear me? Now yeah, I hear there Dan. we go. Hey. How are you doing, man? Uh, pretty good. How are you, you guys doing? Good. We are uh, an hour and 15 minutes into our 12-hour live event. And um, so far, nothing has substantially broken. 
Oh, that's good. Yeah, so that's uh, that's that's a that's a good thing to get. You're not are you you're not gonna send us video? Uh, I don't have video on this computer. Okay. That's okay. That's all right. We will uh, we'll we'll that's fine. You think you're good set up there, Ken? Yeah. All we're right. We're good to go. So, um, let's see how's it going. You've been sounds like you've been bu- pretty busy. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah we, but I've got weeks left, so when you start counting the weeks away uh, till we're we're done, it gets pretty crazy when you're in any, any game project. This is no different. So, for people that maybe uh, are unfamiliar <coughs> with you, give me uh, a, an idea of what your role is at Oxide. Um, obviously, I kind of introed you as Dan Baker from Oxide Games, makers of the Nitrous Engine behind uh, Ashes of the Singularity. What exactly is your kind of role there, and how long you been doing it? Uh, okay, well, that's a that's a long backstory here, <laughs> and and partly short. So Oxide's a, a fairly new company. Um, we're three years old, and I am looking at my business card right now, so it must be correct. This is I'm a partner, and what that means is I'm actually one of the founders of the studio, and. Uh, this is why I can talk to you because nobody can tell me not to. Perfect. It's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> and previous, previously, most of the Oxide uh, members and actually all the founders were, came from Firaxis Games. And we were actually the dev leads for Civilization V. Uh, and we decided, hey, let's make our own studio and make a whole type of uh, set of PC games that aren't being made right now. And three years later, that's what we're doing. So we're really happy with that. Uh, and now my role... I'm the graphics guru, or the lead graphics guru, so that's my kind of role um, from a technical standpoint. But I also can do pretty much any random thing. When you when you <laughs> own part of your own company, there's all sorts of stuff that you have to get involved with it that right. sort of surprises you, like figuring out how to rent office space. That was an interesting <laughs> space, interesting story. Um, and in fact, it took us three months to negotiate the lease. You'll find this amusing because we I had will. to negotiate power because we told them... <laughs> Our computers are going to be using a lot of power because they're going to be crazy. And they were like, what? What? What do you mean you need a circuit for every computer? We're like, yes, we need a circuit for every computer. Yeah, we, we did, I didn't have – we don't we, – obviously, we don't have that many PCs or, or uh, uh, kind of workstations here as you guys obviously have. How many people do you have working at that office? Uh, so the office is sort of complicated because we're uh, – we have a – publishing slash equity uh, relationship with Stardock. So at the office itself, I don't know. Um, we've got several companies here. We're using resources from the other studios. Um, so there's probably... Oxide itself is pretty small. We have about 10 people. Um, but the team is bigger. The team is double that size. So at our actual physical office, there's probably 25 people. Right. Um, it's actually a cool office. If you're ever in the town, you should stop by because uh, Mohawk Games is here. Huh. Um, the Star Control guys are here. I don't know if you know this, but the Star, the Star Control remake is being made with our engine, which is really cool. Um, you guys are up in Mohawk, Baltimore, Mohawk right? Mohawk Games is, is uh, Soren Johnson's company, the lead designer for uh, Civilization Four. Oh, okay. So he's actually co-located with us right now, too. So it's pretty it's pretty interesting like almost incubator for really cool game companies that's awesome and you guys are up in baltimore you said right yep we're in baltimore that's good uh, i like it to be not all you know kind of congealed out on the west coast too which is why we got you on here earlier in the day as opposed to later in the day most of the other people that we're dealing with uh are west coast bound so at time zone shifting yeah our office set up here is you know we basically came into like a 1500 square foot place not very big and we just said take out every single wall uh, and reroute every power outlet because that's the kind of we wanted one giant open open space for us here. So it worked out pretty well, I think as well. So it, it's interesting. Um, obviously, uh, you guys have been pushing forth for the the full release here of Ashes of the Singularity. Uh, you released a what did you call it? The second major revision of the game um, for early access just a couple of weeks ago, or was that? Uh, yeah, we put out beta two. Okay. Uh, We've had many updates, um, right? So now we're moving on to the final stretches, and basically everything that's going to be in the game is in the game. Uh, we're at the last sort of stretch. There's a few missing things, like the big thing that's not in there right now is the campaign. There's a campaign that you play, right. that you can play. Uh, that's the biggest thing that's not there. But yet, yeah, there's still updates every week. I'm just looking at our email and I'm like, oh, there's a new update coming out this week where we're just <laughs> fixing some bugs and stuff. Right. But that's that's the new. That's what sort of I find funny about um, 
uh, the internet these days because people talk about, oh, your game is released or not. And you're like, you know, you're not really ever released because even when we're quote unquote released, we're, we're still going to be doing updates every few weeks. Right. Yeah, yeah, and and you're not the only ones, obviously, that are doing that. And there's there's a lot of games that kind of evolve as opposed to just release. Um, now, it, you you guys, and and I guess you in particular, have been a big proponent of these kind of new uh, low level APIs, right? You were one of the early adopters of AMD's Mantle API. You're one of the earliest adopters of DirectX 12, and you've talked about implementing a Vulkan. Uh, version of the nitrous engine, I guess, as well, right? What What is it about the benefits of these new engines that really appeals to you? Like, why do you want to be first? Why do you want to jump in there and be the guy that has to deal with all the questions from people like me, as opposed to waiting a year and kind of like, okay, now everything's kind of been laid out. We can jump ahead. Well, it's because we like you so much. <laughs> uh, we've... Um... It's, it's actually sort of born out of, of somewhat of frustration. One of the things that's sort of frustrating for us, we've worked on mostly strategy games, um, real time and otherwise. And if we f feel like that a lot of the technology and the graphics technology in the industry is geared toward first person shooters. Um, and when you're actually talking about a strategy gaming game, it, your needs are very different. Right. I mean, I'm looking right now, and it's sort of uh, disconcerting. If you go to Steam, I'm actually going to go right now. If you go to the Steam front page right. and look at the top 10 games, you've got Dota 2, which is not FPS. I mean, Counter-Strike and Team Fortress are FPSs. Football Manager 2016, I'm pretty sure isn't a FPS. Civilization no, 5 is still yeah. up there. I can't believe my <laughs> and Ark is. Worth for, so, like, half of these games are not yeah. FPSs, but we keep building our graphics tech around, like, a type of... of a game engine that isn't even necessarily the majority one. Uh, and so when we're talking about uh, the issues that we ran into at Firaxis, uh, it's all about, I mean, the, the driver overhead was just, just killing us. And they've, they've gotten better. Like, they've, they've sort of hand-optimized some of these drivers. But, I mean, it just it became so dominant that, like, you'd have to go to your game designer. Imagine going to going to a, off, um, a meeting and you're going to your game designer. He's a great idea for a game. And you have to be the guy who says, yeah, we can't do that because the driver isn't going to work. And that's a really not a, a fun discussion to have. So the right. reason why we've been very pro next gen technology is that we felt a lot of games weren't getting made because of technological limitations. So Oxide's one of Oxide's goals is to make the types of games that, that don't exist because the technological limitations have prevented them. We just we really want to uh, explore that space. That's cool. Uh so um, if we look at kind of the evolution, right? So uh, Mantle was kind of like the first thing that really came out and, and sparked this big discussion, both in uh, game development and in driver development and in the media, and even really um, from gamers themselves, right? And I, f I always find it interesting that uh, as, a, as a PC enthusiast myself, the PC enthusiast community, they are more enthusiastic about this technology than I think most people like at the hardware devs, right? At AMD and NVIDIA, it almost feels like uh, or devs where a lot of these these guys who are posting in forums, the guys who are real uh, vocal on social media are, are kind of pushing forward now that we want to see DX12 in different things. Did you Have you guys felt any of that? Were you getting positive feedback, negative feedback from just the implementation of DX12 and, and Mantle and Vulcan for that matter in Ashes? Oh, you've had yeah, overwhelmingly positive feedback. And, and you're right, it's sort of surprising to us because it's very technical, geeky stuff, right? Like, you have to be sort of an industry expert to understand the actual nuances, right. nuances of this stuff. And it's been surprising how much fan interest there's been in this technological. And, uh, you know, it surprised us quite a bit, like, how much interest people have had. And we, we've uh, sort of had a to have a quick uh, learning experience of how to deal with all the interest in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I mean, I mean, if, to be to be fair, it was like when we first saw. I think I was at uh, some conference, and you were up on stage talking about this engine when when the very very first demo was coming out using Mantle. And it was yep. like, okay, now I want to talk to these guys. I want to meet these guys. I want to ask them questions about the hardware, about the software, how it all works together. And it, and it was clear that I don't know if you guys didn't expect the kind of uh, uh, 
from media and outside and the outside world essentially about what it was going to become. Um, and so, f so for me now, if we look again at kind of the most recent release, the beta two that came out um, that we uh, got you know a handful of days early. Do we want to go ahead and pull up the benchmark maybe so we can give a? Oh yeah. Sure, we I've can show what the here. game looks like while yeah, we're talking about it. Uh, let's see. May what? it not crash. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Now that we're doing everything live. <laughs> um, so when we when we got this in, first of all, I want to commend you for uh, paying attention to our requests and like implementing things like the FCAT overlay, right? So this is, it was completely, not necessarily a benefit to you guys to do it. It was an extra step for you personally to integrate it. I would probably turn that down some. Are you getting Ooh, loud. Here? Yeah. Uh, uh, to, to, but it helped us out. It has the potential to help us out dramatically when it comes to performance evaluations uh, and, and that type of stuff. So let's go ahead and run that. And then once that gets going, Ken, you can go ahead and, and, uh, and set it up there. Um, so why did you, so I guess all things considered, why did you decide to go ahead and implement that technology for us or for the media in general? Oh, because we like you. <laughs> no, That's the uh, second time we've gotten that. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't that hard to do. So, you know, anytime you're asking for things to help you do analysis, we're big tech enthusiasts, right? Oh, you've got on there. Um, you know, we're big tech enthusiasts ourselves, so we really like, um, uh, reading lengthy reviews of stuff. So we understand it's pretty difficult to, to do a lot of performance testing. So anything that can automate it is a, is a good idea. So when we got the FCAT stuff, I was like, well, you know, it's probably not a lot of work for us. To, it, it really wasn't too bad. Uh, obviously, we had that little color sequence thing where I got the colors wrong because it was, right. wasn't, uh, I don't know why, I was just being brain dead stupid. And I didn't have a way <laughs> of testing it because it's actually sort of hard to get that rig set up. Um, and we don't have one set up, so I was guessing. Um, so that, that's you know, primary reason is that it's it's not that hard for the game to provide diagnostic diagnostics, and we do have a very selfish reason for it. Uh, one of the things that people don't realize is that when the hardware guys, hardware architects, um, go and they design GPUs, they take a look at these these benchmarks. They actually really care a lot right. about the benchmarks. So one of the things that's frustrating us is that. If you look at like the, most of the benchmarks, they're reviewing FPSs. Well, okay, right. we're not making FPSs. So <laughs> we knew full well that if we make a really easy to use benchmark that gives you a lot of data, that this will influence the hardware architecture to be something that was useful for us. Hmm. That's, a good, that's a good point. You're, so not only do you have, so if, I, if we're looking over here, for people who are watching the live stream, there is this kind of flashing bar on the left-hand side. That is actually the... <clears throat> the FCAT kind of capture-based performance overlay that we would normally feed into a capture system that we're able to then to read frame by frame. We can get a whole lot of information about how long each frame is on the screen, for example. Um, but you already output a ton of timer data, essentially, to a text file, right? So do you, in, your, in your opinion, is the data provided by this FCAT overlay different than what you kind of output through that timer data? Is it just a different way of viewing it? It depends. This gets very complicated. Um, so the FCAT's measuring a very specific thing. Uh, it, it's useful for measuring what it measures, but it, it's not measuring the render time for frames necessarily due to the way, because we have the whole controversy, or not controversy, but issues of of like how the, the new display working in Windows 10, um, our timers are extremely accurate for what they're telling you. I mean, they're telling you the render time for each frame. Right. And we're very confident of that. But FCAT is telling you sort of the, the what the stream is doing. Now, the really nice thing about FCAT, uh, of, of course, you have to – I've talked to you about, about this, about like the, the VSync thing. It's sort of assuming that it works a certain way. And if it doesn't, the, the data may not mean what you think it does. Right. Um, the really nice thing about FCAT is that it, it correlates the frame. Because you've got the, the data injected onto the frame itself, it's on the stream, you actually know what every frame is doing. right? So you can analyze the, the data stream after the fact. So it's pretty useful to have a marker on the actual stream so we can take a look at it um, after the fact. Because if, if you're just looking at a bunch of, of timings, like I don't, I had questions before where, where people were like, well, I see there's a bad frame here. What was going on? And you can't figure it out. Like, you're like, well, I don't know what was going on in that frame, but when you look at something FCAT, it's really nice because you can correlate it directly with the 
Okay. I, I, I agree. I mean, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm just kind of glancing over here. This is one of the outputs of data, and we don't, we're not going to have the time to kind of detail this mm. really step by step by step, but we see a whole bunch of, of very useful information about GPU boundedness, average frame rates. Uh, if we go into the breakdown, you have individual, like, Mm -hmm. normal, medium, heavy batches, which that correlates to uh, how many draw calls you kind of have on the frame at any given time. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. And then you actually have it broken down into individual scenes, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to, this was actually very useful for us um, to validate some of the data. We basically would take the information you put here and in the log file compared to the data we got from our FCAT capture and frame rating kind of analysis side of things. And we could match up oh, what's happening in Fighters Chase Cam 2. We see this, we see this. And it, and it helped us tremendously uh, make some, some important kind of, I guess, discoveries about what was, what was really happening in the game. Now, what do you... So since this has come out, there's been a whole lot of different discussion around DirectX 12 and, uh, you know, actually because of a confu uh, kind of a confusion on our part or the media's part uh, about this game, a whole wider range discussion about kind of like the Microsoft Store. Uh, yeah. So uh, taking, let, let's, so let's, let's say this, uh, the, the exclusive full screen stuff the difference between AMD and NVIDIA, AMD kind of came out and officially said that, yeah, we didn't have some particular uh, enumerated uh, item in DirectX 12 for direct flip, so their next driver will do that, so that the NVIDIA and AMD behavior will end up being the same in your game. Um, so that was helpful information. Um, but if you, if you look at what DX12 is, and it's separate from the Microsoft Store, but then what Tim Sweeney came out and wrote a big editorial about this week, do you have any thoughts or opinions on kind of the way you guys are taking their, your games versus the pathway? Because obviously, you're selling this game on Steam, right? You're selling this mm -hmm. game um, through, not through the Microsoft Store, at least currently. Is that a concern for you guys, kind of the ability to maintain an open platform like this? Yeah, I don't, I don't know why Tim was so militant about um, the Microsoft Store. I mean... From, see, this is the nice thing is I actually have all this experience with the business side, so I could see the numbers on it. And, like, nobody buys things. I mean, I hate to say this, but nobody buys games on Microsoft Store. It's just not relevant in the industry. Right. So Microsoft can do whatever they want. And they're not – I mean, you just sort of laugh. They're not forcing us to do anything. Uh, so we're, we're making a DX12 game, and we can do whatever we want. I mean, it's it's – the platform's totally open. Right. Uh, I mean, I suppose if you want to sell something through the Microsoft Store, which is your choice, and I – you know, it's actually a pain in the butt. Um, I don't know if I could say that online, but yes, you absolutely can. But we're, we're, it's sort of a pain. They have all these things you're supposed to do, and you're just sort of like Microsoft you're crazy. Like you're you're like 0.1 percent of the market. You can't demand all this stuff. No one will do it. Uh, so it doesn't really going to influence anything. I mean, I, I guess that people have a fear they're going to try and lock Steam out, but I, there's no way that's going to happen. I mean, Steam has 150 million users. Microsoft would be insane to try and do something like lock Steam off the system. I mean, that's just not going to happen. Right. So I, the practical matter is that I understand Microsoft's trying to, they're trying to, I think what they're trying to do is like when you're on the Xbox uh, platform, there's a set of requirements that you're supposed to meet. Um, and that's to provide consistency between all the applications. And it's all sorts of random stuff like uh, the Save screens have to be unified so there's no confusion. That the game has to load within a certain amount of seconds, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and I, th I think what they're trying to do is is provide a, some level of homogeneity on the the Windows side, so that when you buy a game on it, that there's a certain minimum bar of technical things that are met. I'm sure that's right. what they're trying to do. I, I don't think that there's an, a, they're really trying to lock the system down or is any, any giant conspiracy by them to do that anyway. Yeah. I, I, I agree that I thought Tim's editorial was more aggressive than I thought it would be based on kind of the input I had been getting from Microsoft uh, directly. Um, and I honestly do believe that a lot of their goals and kind of the intentions, at least for the platform and kind of improving things and, and, and trying to have this cross compatibility is this kind of amazing goal that has always been up in the air. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm with you. Like, it only matters if people buy games through the Microsoft Store, and they don't do that today. Uh, the only worry is that Microsoft may put ex more, ex more and more exclusive titles on that store, right? So uh, their own titles like uh, the new Gears of War and I think, uh, what's that game, Ken? Quantum Break is going to mm -hmm. come out this month. That's going to be exclusively on that store. 
Um, and so you, you do worry about that, but I, you know, once I got confirmation from Microsoft that yes, they, they plan to continue to allow like an exclusive full screen mode for DirectX 12 for anybody else to use, uh, I felt much more comfortable with kind of their, I guess the controversy that surrounded what they were doing. And, and there's some confusion about our game. I noticed that people are saying we don't do exclusive full screen. That's not true. We we do a full exclusive full screen in Windows um, on DirectX 12. The difference is the swap chain effect, but they were actually in full screen mode. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the that was the AMD versus Nvidia thing, where we could get a, a GeForce card to go into what we what we're used to it as a full screen with vertical tearing or horizontal tearing and VSync mm-hmm. and all that. We couldn't with AMD. AMD has since come out and said they're going to have a driver that will. Uh, I guess either it's Flip X or Direct Flip, or maybe those are the same things, and I don't really understand the that yeah, aspect. And of... Neither do I. Okay. Uh, <laughs> not. It's like stuff that's beyond, like like in the bowels, and yeah. that stuff is like there be dragons down there. <laughs> <laughs> Like it is it is pretty tricky. The funny thing is that all this blew up. Like you guys are like eight months behind the dev community. Right. We we discovered all these changes back in like June of the summer, and there's just this very long and angry forum of developers saying, "How are we supposed to profile our game?" And what are you do? Yeah. And then we so we figured all this out. Sort of came to terms with it. Okay, it's not the end of the world. We understand what's going on. Uh, and then it's funny that nine months later. All of a sudden, uh, it's coming out to the public, and they're exactly the same conversation that internally everybody was having like nine months ago. Yeah. Yep. It's 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 been interesting. If nothing made uh, made the last week of my life a little bit more exciting. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is your take on Vulkan? I think you. I think have you, have you guys said publicly that you are going to imp- implement a Vulkan API version of uh, Ashes of the Singularity or the Nitrous Engine? I guess. So uh, a little background on Vulcan. Uh, Vulcan is made by the Kronos Group. And we are actually part of the Kronos Group. Okay. Uh, so we're very active in it. We've been very active in the development of Vulcan. Uh, we've done some headway into working on Vulcan. We actually have some code and a little bit of stuff working. Um, but Vulcan is obviously, I don't know, how, probably at least a year behind DX12 for, mm. for where it was. Uh, and it just came out like, you know, months Right. So it's just, um, and we're too focused on getting ashes at the moment. But once ash is out the door, uh, we're gonna, you know, take another stab at, or get deeper into a Vulcan. Vulcan's very similar to D three twelve. It's so similar in many ways that I imagine long term why anybody who supports the X twelve wouldn't also hmm. uh, consider doing Vulcan. Okay. Um, it 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 really. Very, very similar. Um, do you think a, that will have any impact? Sorry, do you think that have any impact on things like Steam OS or Linux gaming? Oh yeah, it could have huge impact. I mean, Valve really, really committed to Vulkan. They're they're putting a lot of resources into sort of making packaging up and making it nice. Um, I can't go into the, some of the business stuff I know, but like yeah, they're they're very committed toward it. So I have a lot of confidence that Vulkan will become extremely viable. Um, so the first step is just to get us on Vulkan. But like the graphics API is the hard thing about getting onto SteamOS. Like, hard thing right. about getting into Linux. Right. So with Vulkan being a real viable solution here, and I do think it is, a um, relatively small amount of work if you've already done DX12, th- it could really make Linux gaming viable. That, that I think, uh, I know a lot of our readers and viewers and, and fans, whatever, are, are top, is a topic that they're really interested in. So- I'll be curious to see how that kind of uh, gets impacted. Um, so, what do you have? What do you guys have planned here for the next couple of months? Is it is it really focused on we need to get this game done and out the door for like its full release? Do you guys have? Do you guys plan any kind of more significant DirectX 12 feature implementations at all? Uh, not for this version of the game. Um, you know. I think we did a pretty good job of using DX12 features, but the reality is that we're probably not going to be completely exploitive on DX12 until we can kill our DX11 path. Right. Uh, now, that's one exciting thing about Vulkan, because Vulkan's down-level OS support like on on Windows 7, so one of the reasons for wanting to support is that it allows us to, it sounds weird, but it allows us to kill our DX11 Interesting. path. Interesting, right. Um, so that's uh, pretty exciting for us. And and so the next iteration of our engine, we've already got you know, our next project sort of starting to plan out. Um, that would be expansion packs to, to Ashes. Ashes is doing pretty well, and, and there's a lot of interest. So we're we're going to continue supporting it, um, actually even more than we were expecting. So it's, it's, it's selling better than our projections. Good, good. That's awesome. And the... 
So the next version of the engine, we're really looking at architecting around sort of natively some of the really cool stuff that DX12 can do. Right. And that gets obviously very technical discussion. But uh, <laughs> so in a couple of years, you'll probably see Nitrous 1.5 or 2.0 or however we brand it. That will sure. do some exciting things. Do you think the multi GPU implementation that you guys have is kind of as good as you can get for now? Is it? Is there a lot more to be exploited, or is that really something that? we probably are putting too much faith in or, or like pe the community is getting too too excited about uh, than they should be. I think we could do a lot better on, on our multi-GPU, right? I mean, we're this is the first stab at it. Yeah. And I, I mean, oh, man, I'm going to get killed by the high AHVs. Honestly, the drivers from both uh, AMD and NVIDIA were lagging behind our support of this mm. stuff. So we couldn't do all the stuff some of the fancier stuff just because like we we're barely getting drivers that worked at all right um because no you know we could talk to them and like yeah but no one's they're like you're the only guys who've got this working right now so we don't have any test cases i'm like well <laughs> here you go here's a test case yeah i, I it has been i don't I, since the, well, i don't know what year it was that the company lucid logics came out and promised cross vendor cross generational support 2010, I we think it was. So it's been a long time that this has kind of been an idea. And then, of course, as the community tends to do, they find that one feature that comes out like on a DirectX 12 bullet feature list that everybody kind of gravitates towards. So it's interesting. Uh, it's interesting to, to kind of see it implemented. And you're, you're right. You're the only ones that are doing it. And it, it's, it's impressive. It's impressive to see so far. Um, we're, we're kind of towards the end of our time. I'm curious, do you have any... Anything that you would like express to the community or stuff that you want uh, uh, them to do or not do? Do you want to push forward? Do you need more emphasis on Vulkan, on DX12, uh, anything like that that kind of stands out on something you might want to just kind of air out there? No, I, I, I just want to say thank you to the community. Everyone's been very popular. You know, it's a good experience for us. Um, you know, the press has been very positive. Our fans have been very positive. Uh, there's a lot of hardware enthusiasts. Uh, part of what we realized we're making PC games is that PC games can be deeper than just people playing a game. A lot of people love their hardware, and it's a hobby for them. You mm -hmm. know, building the machine. There's this whole thing that goes into it. So. We really wanted to make sure that we uh, take advantage of all the, the time and effort people are spending on their PCs as part of our credo. So we're really excited that, that uh, people are, are very positive about it because it's really easy to get negative real fast. Like yeah. this is prototype – not prototype, but this is first-gen technology. It, it, it very easy for something to go horribly wrong and, and uh, you know, sometimes people have to be patient with us and, and the IHVs to like work, work through all the issues. I, I, I'm i impressed. I'm glad that there are developers out there like you that are pushing things forward and uh, are, are really kind of putting, putting not just like, you know, they're putting, uh, you guys are putting stress on, uh, I'm going to say stress, but emphasis on us. It's like, hey, here are these things, test these things out, which in turn puts pressure on IHVs, uh, puts pressure on, on Microsoft and Kronos Group to get these things out the door and up and running. So I, I, I think you are a big part of kind of moving this community and this industry in the right direction. Where can people follow you or find you if they want to keep up with uh, uh, your doings on the internet? Uh, they can uh, obviously go to our website, um, Oxide Games, although you can also go to our Ashes, Ashes of the Singularity <laughs> website with us lots of po forums. Right. And they can follow us on Twitter. And if I can remember the Twitter handle, I think it's just Oxide Games. Yeah. I think that's what it is, too. And, and every now and then we post something on Twitter. Uh, I think we should post more often. but <laughs> Probably should. You can look up Dan on Twitter, too. He's interesting. If you're into the tech, the, the, the DirectX 12 Vulcan tech talk, he, you're an interesting follow as well. Obviously, for me, it's where yep. we keep And I'll be talking at GDC, on. actually, uh, quite oh, a bit. Okay. On Vulcan, even. Oh, awesome. I will be there, so uh, let me know when your, when your sessions are, and I'll, I'll stop by and have a okay. listen. So. Thank you very much for stopping by, Dan. Really appreciate it. Uh, you are the first guest on our crazy-ass 12-hour live stream. Uh, and I, hope, I hope you have plenty of <laughs> and, uh or coffee. Yeah, we, we, I, all I have is Diet Coke and water. Maybe I should have planned better. Oh, no, there's beer in the fridge. There's beer in the fridge, too. So <laughs> That'll have the intended effect, right? Right. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I usually drink whiskey. Yes. Uh, yeah, thing. see, I should have brought in some bourbon. You're right. Damn. All right. Well, thanks, Dan. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, see Bye. you later. All right. So, there you go. First interview down. Hot shit, we're still on schedule. 
<clears throat> it's time to look over to my right and see what the hell Sebastian is doing. Nobody knows. He's so far under the table now. Yeah, I'm finishing up construction of the table proper, and then we can start building the actual PC inside. So do we have legs on the table yet? Oh, it's, it's done. I'm just adding the uh, headphones bracket. That seems unnecessary. Necessary. All right, Ken, mute me. I'm going to disconnect my mic here. OK. I'm finding that it's it's very important with this build to get everything lined up absolutely perfectly because these are some very small screws. They're very easy to strip. But once you have it lined up, it's actually pretty easy to It feels pretty it just, solid. It just looks really cool too. Like that's, that's just a cool looking thing. Yeah. It kind of has like, it feels like a giant tower just like on its side. Like you were building it on a table, but it is the table. Yeah. And is, that, is that a ribbon cable in the middle? Yep. The uh, This ribbon cable that it comes with allows you to... It looks like the GPU actually mounts flat against the surface here. And then this will plug into your PCI Express port on your motherboard. Huh. We've seen that with many ITX boards, any of the low-profile stuff. This is built like a low-profile case. Yeah. It's about 120 millimeters tall, it looks like, from the side fans. But actually, everything is built on this raised platform, and with four thumb screws, this whole motherboard tray comes right out, which is nice. So you could actually, if you wanted to, you could take this whole thing out, build it, but honestly, it's a table. I would just uh, build it right in here. And we'll see how it goes. Looks like the PSU is pretty far away from the GPU, so hopefully we have a long enough uh, cable. I didn't bring any extensions, but see how it goes together. We're going to go ahead and turn on the overhead light. There we go. Throw up white balance a little bit. Should be okay. Well, we'll turn it off for the next interview, but just so you can see in the black on black on black. Impressively, I don't think I've lost any screws yet. Oh, that can't be true. <laughs> you break it, you bought it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, move that glass over the other side. Thanks. Sebastian, do you think you'll be done by five? Uh, yeah. <laughs> he is a PC building professional.
No. Nope. Do you think you're gonna put it together with the tray in there? Um, I don't know because it, it would help a lot to have a tray out for cable routing. Right. Because there's a little bit of an aid underneath it, and you could get everything kind of moved around. But you could really, if you weren't as concerned about cable routing, you could build it all inside the table. But right. It is nice that this tray does come out. I was just kind of trying to eyeball where do the cables need to be. Yeah, just, do you, I mean, do you think from, if a person were to buy this, would they want to like put that on a table somewhere? If, as weird as that sounds, yes. Put it on a separate now that I look at it, because you could, you could put your system on here. This is where the motherboard will go, mount your GPU here, and then you could just flip it around and organize all your cables. Because yeah. your PSE will be mounted on this as well. If you want, we can put the glass back on here, and then do we have something? We have the neoprene cover that you can put on it. That way, okay. about scratching the glass. So build this on itself. Build the table on itself. Recursive table building. Might be a good idea to move these screws first. Yeah. Sebastian Peak in the Zen art of PC building. Furniture building, I guess. When I'm a little bit of both. It was it was furniture building and now we're PC building. Are you confident in your furniture building skills? I've done a lot of IKEA furniture. Um, it's far too much. But no real ability, no. I am not a carpenter. I could not actually build anything myself. I think you'd be safe to assume this will accommodate virtually any motherboard form factor. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like EATX, no problem. Is this EATX, this board? Uh, no, I think that's just ATX. Yeah, just ATX. Seems wide. Um, yeah. But it's not, it's definitely not EATX. Okay. Toad Sloth is right. This is not for the amateur builder. Do not make this your first PC build. There's lots of room. <laughs> you have a lot of margin for error. Whenever you have a removable motherboard tray, I feel like it could be anybody's first build. Yeah. Take this whole tray to your friend's house who knows how to build PCs. <laughs> and then you can't bring your whole case. That's true. It's like, oh yeah, let me bring my Where's computer. Where's the power supply and stuff mounted? It's right here. So you really could take the, the whole thing. The entire thing be this tray. Hmm. And it's got these handles on the sides. Then you could mount that to the wall. You could. What are these down here for? Wire feeds? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Oh, to take your connections maybe? Oh, all right. That makes sense. Yeah. Your video and... I guess. Or that's what this is for. Actually, wouldn't the video be here with the uh, video well, the video would... See, if you want to be clean, you have the video come out here, mm. go down here, and then come up okay. here or come out here or something. Uh, these are the connections for... Is, it, is this where your USB and stuff goes? Or is this your... Yeah, because your front panel connectors are not exposed, I don't think. Huh. Well, what's on the other side over there? You do have some front I.O. Or no, that is the front. Someone was saying it'd be oh, cool to mount the tray underneath the desk. How about if I turned it around so we're looking at it the right way? Ah, okay. Sure. So there's a spot for a slim optical drive. I see. And front I.O. Okay, the I.O. is actually on the panel here. Yeah. So even that's on the that panel. That makes sense. Take this that. is really a complete system. Like, I've it's got... 
It's got two. We used You'll have like the point. power and reset and all that will be built into this tray. That, that motherboard has two front panel connectors, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah okay. Nice. We picked the right motherboard. Go us. <laughs> Go us. <clears throat> Sometimes grabbing hardware at random pays off. <laughs> As it turns out, you can usually do that around here. Is this, <clears throat> is this the most complicated case you've ever worked on? Uh, yeah, probably. You, you, just because you, you actually have to build it. Well, that's true. Most cases come pre-assembled, and you that's, just have a little hardware a back. Point. I do like that all the are in their own little bag. Are they labeled? No. <coughs> Why if they were does labeled, no one that would label be the screws? Best. I, know. I, I don't understand that. Some do. Really? Do they really? Who? Yes. Uh, I'd have to look back at old reviews. I don't remember anymore. I've definitely seen bag. I think Leanne Lee. No. Inwin? Maybe. It's not Corsair. I use Just a lot like of Corsair. No, it's not Corsair. Inwin does. Print a letter on the bag. And then have and a then, letter in the manual yeah. that, yeah. It might be I a agree. sticker on the bag. That'd but be fine. Can we get me a water out of there? Yeah. Please. Let's see. But this is a very Lee and Lee, like, hard drive setup, too. Like, the Q33 case, I think, that I did. Oh, right. All you do is you, you screw. put, the, like, the rubber. Yeah. And then slide them in. You slide them. You yeah. screw these to the bottom of the hard drive, and then you can just slide your drives in. And it looks like they've got patterns for two and a half and three and a half inch. Right. Anything like that? Yeah. Yeah, you can fit a lot of hard drives in that case. I think it's I like would hope five so. hard drives. Let's see. It's One, pretty cool two, to just have in your desk. Yeah, in the table. <clears throat> it's it's Alan's table, essentially. This one? Yeah. Oh, Wait, yeah. he, he'd have hard drives mounted in the table going into his PC case just so he could get extra mounting. <laughs> he wouldn't put the PC in, the, in the table, he'd just put hard drives in there. Yeah. That'd be kind of cool, actually. Cool. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay. Especially that if you right had like Velociraptors. Mic thing. <laughs> <laughs> You're now on life support. Do you feel do you feel better because of it now? I do feel better. Yeah. yeah. Are you doing like a tweet or something? I could retweet out. Uh, I can do that right now. Do that, yeah, and then I'll do, give it a right. retweet. Uh, are you getting too much sunlight? Uh, you can shut it if you yeah, want. Yeah, probably go ahead and shut it. You want the overheads back off or no? Uh, in a minute. Yeah, well, uh, give me one more minute. Are we live on audio right now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Good enough. <laughs> yeah, I should have mentioned, pretty much when you walk in, it's during this it's, day. Yeah, it's a small if, enough room. If you're, <laughs> if you're in here, you're pretty much just always Even if it's live. just bleed through on another mic, you're on, you're on the internet. Yeah. How many viewers are there right now? Tens of thousands. 8, 000, I, think. No. I don't know. Amazing. I'm, quite I'm, a few. I'm kind of purposely not bringing up anything on this computer because this computer is also kind of tied to the thing. Sure. So I don't want to accidentally bring up things that I don't want out there, like mm -hmm. my email. Like I closed everything just in case. There's a special panic that happens when you realize <laughs> th there have been stories I've run where I've taken a picture of yeah. my desktop. Right. And then I put it live and I'm like, that's a pretty good, that's a well composed picture. <laughs> and then like, you're, you're sipping a cup of coffee and you realize, I didn't double check what tabs I had open. <laughs> Correct. Not that, not that I look at a lot of things that I would consider inappropriate, but there's this fear of like... That's, that's how Kanye West gets caught on Pirate Bay. Right. <laughs> and, and readers, whatever image you put up, they will go over it with a fine tooth oh, comb. Yeah. It's, oh, yeah. it's like, oh, you have the second edition of that Stephen King novel. I have the same version. And I was like, how did you? <laughs> I didn't realize my DSLR was taking pictures of that resolution. And we were, they'll see everything. All right, <clears throat> are you confident enough that I'll, that we can leave this shot and move on? Yes, please do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the manuals are on the floor here. If you get lost, yeah, I can, uh, apparently, I can't read them from here. apparently there are trays at the SSDs. It's in someone's telling me. I will look for those. Yeah. Just tweeted it. Just so you know. Yeah, I'm looking for it. All right, do we have this camera shot working yeah. now? Let's do our overheads off. And. No, wrong one. Can we adjust that light behind him too? Yep. Let's see my my twelve hour s schedule here That's nice. of things. <laughs> this is the most complicated thing we've ever <laughs> attempted to do. 
<clears throat> and so far, it's so working far. out. It's working out pretty well. It's doing all Nothing's right. Nothing's caught on fire. No, that IKEA table is not wood. You cannot knock. I was gonna say, yeah, <laughs> not It's not real wood. Let's put it that way. I'm not counting the particle board. All right, we continue on into our uh, third hour of live streaming. You're the beginning of our third nice. hour of live streaming. So you're fresh. Like yeah, this yeah, isn't. Yeah. You're not dying yet. This is, you're still feeling. Pretty when we good. get into that 10:15 call with Patrick here at the end, <laughs> it's pretty much gonna be Patrick <laughs> carrying us to the end of the show. I can I can feel it. So thanks for coming by. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is uh, Ben Kuchera, now of Polygon. Yep. Dot com. Mm -hmm. um, it's always interesting. So I told I told him, I was like, oh, Ben Kuchera from Polygon's coming. He's like, oh, he lives near here. He's like, yeah, actually lives in Cincinnati. We used to work at Electronics Boutique together in the Florence Mall. See, I thought, and my wife was like, oh, did, is this an old retail friend? I thought, didn't you used to work at the toy store? I worked... Um, uh, holiday at KB Toys. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But I, I Back when that existed. Yeah, <laughs> when that was a thing. When retail existed, really. Uh, so we go back a long way. Yeah, absolutely. Electronics Boutique. Yeah, that was, that was a long so, time so ago. So for the younger viewers out there, Electronics Boutique was a video game <laughs> retailer that ultimately became EB Games yep. that was purchased by GameStop. That's right. And now it's it's all GameStop, right? It's 100%. It's all GameStop. We, none of these stores exist. It's just... Did anybody buy Babbage's? Okay. GameStop. Of course. The Babbage's and Funko Land. Are all... Funko did, Land. All went into the same... It all went into the same thing. Remember when you went into a Funko Land and they had the, the printout? Yeah. Of like oh, a yeah. list of every single yes. game that existed and how much you could make for bringing it in. There was... Uh, <laughs> one of my best friends was a manager at Video Game... On... <laughs> On Mall Road, <laughs> and like this is while we were in high school, and this yeah. is this is this tells you about the state of retail because he was a senior in high school, maybe a freshman in college. And he was the manager of the store. He was he was running shit. He was running it all. <laughs> no and, wonder they didn't succeed. Yeah, ultimately. and all 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 we would do, I was a year younger than him. We would all show up after school and we would just play video games all day because they had all like they were a used shop, right? And they had and you the could setups. just plug in anywhere, and we would just sit on the counter. Like, literally sit on the counter and play games. And looking back, it's like, that's the worst shopping experience if you're an adult to go into a store where there's a bunch of, like, 17 to 19-year-old kids <laughs> just sitting around playing games, ignoring you for hours at a time. And then one of them jumps up and tries to sell you something. It's like, oh, you're actually an employee. You're getting paid for this time. And when we did lots of the stuff where people would bring in games to trade that were, like, really rare, and we would just buy them from them instead of getting them to the store. No, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah like, the whole, like, just give them cash. Oh, yeah, we're oh, doing yeah. a cash deal right now for Final, this. Like Final Fantasy <laughs> Unopened III copy comes of in, Panzer in a Dragoon like, Saga. Oh, yeah, no, we've definitely got Yeah, this. right? <laughs> so, uh, what do you do now? So, right now, t technically my, my job title is Senior Editor of Opinion. So, I run the opinion section. I do, I have people write freelance stuff. We do a lot of developers writing stories about the industry. I do a lot of op-eds and that right. sort of thing. My secondary and kind of moving into my primary job right now as things get closer to retail is virtual reality. Right. Uh, mostly due to the fact I've been a virtual reality enthusiast my whole life. I've gone to, you know, CES for years and years and years where everyone was like, oh no, we have we have the virtual reality headset. And then you go and you test it out and it's, it's garbage. And this was going right. on for years and years and years until finally um, I was given a demo um, by a young man, an up-and-comer by the name of John Carmack. I've heard of him. He's, he's done, done some, some, some he's stuff. He's done some stuff. He, he's got a bright future ahead of him. <laughs> and um, I was really, this at CES or at QuakeCon? This was at QuakeCon. This right. was the first demos they were doing at QuakeCon. And I was, I told him before I, I put on, this was like the duct tape demo they mm -hmm. had with the Oakley straps of the yep. Oculus Rift. And I told him, I was like, this is like, where I refuse to be hopeful anymore because I always put it on and look around and it's <laughs> terrible. He was like, no, we've cracked it. And then I tried it and I was like, yeah, this is, this is super good. Like, what are you doing with it? He was like, we don't actually own this. It's a kid named Palmer Lucky and another guy named Nate Mitchell. He was like, let me, let me hook you up. So that evening we had like this two hour dinner. This was before Oculus was buried the company, yeah. before the Kickstarter. And I had a long conversation about all the the challenges and opportunities of VR, and they were incredibly smart. They had good answers to my questions, and they were smart enough when I had a question they didn't have an answer for, they would tell me. Yeah. They're like, no, we have to probably partner with someone, like manufacturing is gonna be hard, finding the panels. 
um, I left and backed the Kickstarter like two days later, which yeah. paid off in I the did, end. I did the same thing. Yeah, I did the same thing. Now I think that, I think that we're getting the the did, Kickstarter edition. Did we of have the, to do that at QuakeCon? I'm trying to remember if they opened it up. I kicked the Kickstarter at QuakeCon, or if it was right after. This but. could be my memory revising uh, the yeah, story, but I vaguely remember like leaving that meeting, going to the hotel room, and backing it. Right. Like I, was, I think that sounds right. I right. Think that it was right. it was all happening right there, and since. They were purchased by Facebook. We had Valve go into it with um, the Vive Pre. And do you want to talk about the hardware? We have one. We do. So, yes, I do. So, it's we're getting really close to all this stuff being out now. We got the Rift. This is the HTC Vive. This is not the HTC Vive. This is the HTC Vive Pre. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so, they did a developer's kit, which I, I've had a chance to play with a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it was... A little bit janky. It worked very well, but right. you know, it was a tricky. You could tell if you squeezed it too hard, like the controllers would creak. Yeah. This was something they had to make a lot of quickly. <laughs> the Vive Pre is this the oh, second. Oh, here you go. We got a shot right okay. right about here. here we'll give it one of these. There you go. This is the second version of the development kit, and this okay. is supposed to be relatively close to what we're going to see in retail. But this is what. They've been doing the demos on right. at CES and stuff recently. This is this is the this is the big thing that they've sent a bunch of them to the press, which is how I have one. Right. So most major outlets now have an HTC Pre that we're able to demo games and get a sense for the hardware. Um, these are this I think is where the magic of the controller or of the system is. Yeah. These are the these are the motion sensing controllers. So you don't play most Vive games with a controller. Like, you, a, yeah. like an Xbox controller or whatever. You right. hold these and you're able to manipulate things in 3D and it has full tracking. Um, it has wrist straps that you absolutely <laughs> should use. We'll talk about that in a bit. <laughs> so yeah, these are the controllers that uh, really, I think, provide a ton of what makes the Vive so special. Because since they come with every single unit mm -hmm. developers are comfortable developing. That's a good point. So almost everything ha that has been released, there's a little, when you get your press code for the Vive Pre, right. and you put it in the HTC site, and then they ship you one, yeah. you put the same code into Steam, and it unlocks kind of like, uh, it's, it's a series of that developers can push to the press if they want to gotcha. share their work. Gotcha. So right now I think I have around 28 things downloaded, which is a combination of experiences and like levels of games mm -hmm. and demos and early access works in progress. And almost to a one they use the motion sensing controller. So in terms of the, using this, as, so in, in terms of using these as controllers, they do they have enough inputs for your for what you think they're trying to do so there is there's the touchpad at the top right we've which got which is, is similar if you've used a steam controller it's the same yeah. idea as that and there, okay. there's haptics so when you like rub your you can kind of feel it right and a lot of games are like chopping that into fourths so if you click right left it turns it into a d-pad of sort. sorts okay there's a trigger where you would expect a trigger to be. Um, there's a lot of games that basically model a gun, so you're just holding it out, pulling the trigger. Right. There are two buttons on the side that operate like a squeeze. Oh, okay. Squeeze it, and that's a con that's a, yeah, a control. Here. There's a button on top and a menu button at the bottom. Okay. So it has, I haven't wanted for buttons so far, and when you consider that you're holding two of these, so you can make each trigger do something different, you can make each touchpad do right. something different, it's pretty intuitive to get a sense for it, um, and there are a lot of buttons, but when you pick it up, it all makes sense. Um, it's kind of interesting because when you tell someone, oh, hit the button underneath the touchpad, they can't look down and see it really. <laughs> there's, in the, in the loading program, yeah. there's actually a floating virtual version of the hardware. Yeah. But it's hard, like... But your finger's not over it. Yeah, and right. you can't, like, point to it and have them see it because you're not tracked. Yeah. The other fascinating thing and what kind of blew my mind is if you can see on the hardware, there's there's nothing down here. I don't know if the camera can see that. This is just a, a piece of plastic. When you look at the controller in reality, that turns into a battery indicator. So there's no battery indicator on the external hardware. <laughs> you but when you put the, headphone, put on a the headset on and look at it, you will see a <laughs> row of green lights that tell you how much battery you have left. That's pretty good. So they saved like $2 by not putting little <laughs> LEDs on there. 
the full functionality. And there are games when, when you look down, you see a sword, or you see a gun, or you see just a different floating-looking controller. Mm -hmm. In virtual reality, as long as they model the bottom part, they can make the whole thing look however they want, which is super cool in practice. Yeah. Very hard to explain because people don't really believe it until they try it. Right. But it works. There's a version of... Um, it's basically Fruit Ninja, trademark, called Ninja Training, right. <laughs> which, is, which is not affiliated with Half Brick, I don't gotcha. believe, in any way, gotcha. which is why it's called Ninja Training. <laughs> and it just turns the one controller into a sword, and you're just sitting there slicing it fruit. That's the entire game, and I've spent <laughs> hours on it. Because it turns out, very accurately mod modeling a katana and trying to hit like a flying lemon yeah. is just a whole lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's like, if you had infinite resources, you could get your own katana and have a person just, just throw, throw lemons up in the air? Just okay. hoist a watermelon. Now, when you're here. doing it, are you one controller just or one. two? Okay. And you can put the other one down, or you can just hold it. Okay. Yeah. And, like, a, some people have taken, like, a Nerf katana and, like, duct taped it, <laughs> so you get that weight, which is dangerous. Like, you can Because it doesn't exist in the... Because yeah. it doesn't exist. Yeah. There is a, um... There's a, a super good game called Cell where you're playing tennis against yourself and you just throw the ball and you hit it and then it warps you to the other side oh. you're not trying to knock the tennis ball away from your opponent you're trying to keep it it should volley as long as you can right so the whole idea is to hit it accurately enough that you can return it okay the problem is it's very easy when you're using these controllers to hit it up high and then you want to jump and give it one of these and you smash your ceiling and I've oh. done that about three times. So I, I do want to bring, let's bring that up now. If we look at this particular controller, there is, there seems to be a little bit of uh, yeah, it's damage, bad. It's marking. It's battle damage. Uh, and you, I, I saw an editorial that you posted right. with a video right. as well, talking about some of the potential pitfalls of using this. It's, it's tricky, and it's tricky even if you use the wristband, because if you're playing... If you're playing a demo where you're standing in front of a table, and it's a virtual table, and let's say all of these objects are virtual, you're using the controller in the virtual world, and, and you pick up an item, and you put it down, and you pick up an item, and you put it down, and you pick up an item, and you put it down, you begin to understand the physics of that table. Right. The problem is, then your phone rings, and then you're like, okay, I'm going to put the controller down. And you try to put the controller down, and it turns out that... There's I, no table there. That, really exist and your controller goes tumbling down. I have people like, oh, just wear the wrist straps. But then you're, you get so lost in the simulation, you think you're taking the controller off. So you're like, I'm going to remove the wrist strap and then set the controller down and it just falls straight to the floor. I mean, you even mentioned that like sometimes you, you try to lean on something yeah. that is only there virtually. You don't realize until you're working with a virtual table that feels real inside the game how much you interact with tables in front of you. You put your hands down, you put your coffee on it, which is fine <laughs> until you try to just lean over and put the entirety of your weight on it. And oh, you, man. there is nothing that can match the pure panic because you're so sure of yourself. Right. If you like lean over and put all your weight on a desk, you don't give any you don't hold any of the movement back thinking no. I might have to save myself right and so you get that moment of pure panic as you realize there's nothing there and your face is going to hit the ground there's nothing you can you just take it on the wrist you take it on the face you look ridiculous and is this has any, happened to me twice so I was going to say is there battle damage on this from that or have you no, you, you braced yourself I've been, I've been saving myself with my wrists <laughs> I have just enough time to bring my hands down and not totally but yeah, there's even a warning in the instructions about virtual objects are not real. Do not put weight on them. Do not think you can put something down in real life. I laughed at it until it happened. Now right. I want to just get the word out. You think things are real and you can hurt yourself. It's really cool, I guess, it's, that the simulation is that real. Yeah. And it, it does take once or twice before you become hyper aware of like, okay, I can't actually set something down. I did see, I saw a video <clears throat> just on Twitter of somebody who had modeled their apartment <laughs> in the Vive so that they could walk around parts of it as long as the cables sure. were, right? And like sit down on their couch because the couch was modeled in their apartment and get up. But what? I don't know what the purpose of that is. Unless you only <laughs> want to live inside the headset. I guess, it's, it, I guess yeah. it's interesting in that the virtual version will always be clean. So you That's could just true. be living in like 
object <laughs> filth and not realize it because you have that's a good plan. The actually. virtual version of it, like I mean, oh, I can't see. I mean, we're pretty close. Well, yeah. so you just model better furniture. Right. Like, you just make furniture out of, like, two-by-fours and plywood, and then you oh. model a nice couch. Uh, that you... I can almost feel the rich leather. And it's like, I, rich yeah, Corinthian leather. Yeah, the rich <laughs> Corinthian leather. Uh, what about comfort on this? Is this something where has it... I mean, we have a DK1, we have a DK2 here. Um, I, I've heard some people say that the Vive tends to be more front-heavy than the, than the Oculus Rift. Do, do you feel like this is comfortable to use for extended period? It is a little extended bit front-heavy, and... If you can kind of like get get a sense for that, it it sits higher on your head. The straps do than other VR headsets. Okay. And just like everything, when it comes to something that literally rests on your face, um, I said the same thing when we played with like the Avangent Glyph, which is a little home theater. Yep. That looks like a Jordi LaForge type right. of situation that you just flip down. Any anything you hold over your face, spend ten to twenty minutes on the front end fiddling with it. Because they're, everyone wears it slightly different. Everyone yeah. has a slightly different face. You may wear glasses. You may wear contacts. There's stri there's adjustments over here. There's adjustments back here. You can change how the strap kind of rests on your head. Okay. So I find it very comfortable. But there is also, if you can check this out, these pop. And then when you twist it, the entire mechanism inside moves back and forth. Oh, if okay. you can move it all so the lenses and the right. and the screen. If okay. you can move it all the way towards your face, you're given a slightly better field of view. Mm -hmm. If you move it away, you have slightly more room for your glasses. Okay. I kind of crunch my glasses a little bit because I yeah. like that extra like, <laughs> you know, ten maybe degrees of field of view and then you snap it back. And there's it locks also it in place. yeah, okay. there's also a little knob down here which is inner pupillary distance. Oh, so okay. you just twist that and it's actually linked to the software. So it'll tell you exactly on the screen what your mm. inner pupillary distance is. So if you don't have a glasses prescription, it might, and you're really, really, really into VR and you're gonna get an $800 Vive, it might be worth going to an optometrist and just like, hey, real quick, can you measure my inner pupillary distance? Huh. I know there's even printouts you can do online and hold up to your mirror and kind of roughly oh, do really? it. Okay. But if you adjust the lenses, adjust the inner pupillary distance, spend some time on the straps, once you do all of that and have it set up personally the way you like it, the technology disappears. Like. I've done three hour sessions before. Yeah. Felt very strange coming out of it just because I was in virtual reality for three hours. But in terms of comfort, it didn't, I was able to lose myself in the experience for that long That's without good. thinking that, like, oh, it's chafing back here. Right. Or, like, man, I would really love to keep playing, but, like, I have this crushing headache or there's pressure right. on my temples. That's, that doesn't happen. That's been, you know, the the problem I've had is because all the stuff I've seen has been demos, mm -hmm. right? Where you have, you know, four minutes or 10 minutes and like, you, you know, you want to get it on and you want to start the thing. You're not, you don't want to spend that 10 minutes kind right. of setting things up. So I, I can see that being like a very important step for people to realize when you get this, don't just jump in and go if you want it to be a positive experience. And that's really uh, part of our whole deal here is with the VR side. So let's let's talk about hardware stuff for a second, sure. like PC hardware. Um, the minimum specs for the Vive and the Rift are essentially the same. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend that people try to overshoot those minimum requirements? Or do you think the the type of content and the games you're seeing the, a minimum spec system is really going to produce the best experience or a good enough experience. Not the best. There, there are demos I have, and I'm running a 980 Ti in my system. So, like, this is not an inexpensive part. No. Um, unless you go, I mean, th there are. There are video cards above that, correct? But we're starting to get into like no, there's no single GPU okay. higher than that. Okay. Yeah. So basically, I've I've topped off can do with a, a standard GPU. Right. And there are still demos where the frame rate chugs. Hmm. And I don't I don't even know if these are going to be released to the public. They're clearly unoptimized. It's right. things that Oculus or companies like, you know, Epic were showing on monster rigs where it's not an issue. Right. All of the kind of consumer facing games played where ultimately people like you or I are going to buy this for 20 or $30 and play the game, mm -hmm. they're being very aware of how much power they need. And they're trying to optimize. And you have games. There's a game called Budget Cuts, which is, which is like, it's a very portal-esque experience. Mm -hmm. You can like 
you shoot a little ball and then you warp to it and you can throw knives and kill robots. It's it's, okay. it's, a, it's a super cool game and I have a very short demo kind of showing off the mechanics. Right. And it's very basic. It's all like flat shaded polygons and very simple models. And when you see it on a screen, it's like, yes, this is a very simply rendered game. When you put the Vive on, you don't think about it graphically. Everything feels so solid and the physics engine is so good. You're not in there going, man, I wish the textures were better. You just believe the reality huh. so i'm always fascinated and a lot of games with the gear vr are similar where they go with a stylized route but the head tracking and the tech is so good hmm. you you enjoy the reality of what you're seeing and you're not worried about like oh it would be super great to have slightly better textures interesting that being okay. said 90 frames a second it isn't a suggestion like anything below that if is way more advanced than your graphics card and the frame rate starts to chug. You will get sick very quickly. Okay, so that's that is Right. That's a, it's not just like, oh, 90 ish. Right. You, you have, want to be 90. You have to be at 90 or give yourself some overhead there. Okay. Um, and part of that is on developers to make sure this stuff is optimized. But yeah, you have to hit this spec, and I do think going over a little bit will be helpful. Right. Um and, and it's important to understand there's nothing keeping you from playing any of these games. If you have a five-year-old system with integrated graphics... They're not going to lock you out. Right. You can yeah. still, like, download things, try it, and have a terribly sickening experience. Yeah. But there's nothing that will be like, oh, no, your computer can't handle it, and you can't run it. Mm. You know, like Windows does. With it, yeah. This is unsigned. And right, right. I don't know if they're huh. going to have something like that, but no one's going to keep you from running something. The, the other thing is, if people are... And we talked about this a little bit on Twitter, that mm -hmm. the Oculus tool is kind of misleading, right? It's basically a spec check, but if it doesn't know your hardware, it kind of just defaults to yes or no. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's what you had on yours, right? So I have, and I'm, I'm trying to remember the model of CPU. I'd have to look it up. It's an older CPU. It's like a four-year-old part. It's so like a 2600K? Yeah. Something like that, like but you had it overclocked. But it's, it's so... When Oculus brought up a list of parts, it, it just saw that CPU and said, "Ah, that's old. Like you're you're not you're you're not VR ready." And then I ran the um, Valve tool, mm -hmm. which actually renders a scene yeah. and does real world testing and ha and tests your GPU and your CPU and tests for frame rate and really kind of stresses your system. And they stress, this is good, we're testing for the Vive, we're testing for the Rift, we're testing for everything. My system was like above a 10 on that. Right. And because it looked at the real world, it's like, yeah, your CPU is overclocked to hell. It yep. really handled this scene well. You have a way overpowered GPU for most of the experiences. You're like way better than fine. Right. So run them both and really compare and think about the hardware. There's not a single hit a button, get a good answer yet. You do have to put right. some time into right. it. Right, and I mean, and that's for our standpoint as you know, hardware evaluators, performance analysis, all that type of stuff. The whole VR thing is, is really gonna change things for us because the performance analysis, I, 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 for us it's like, gonna like play the game and if your frame rate is above 90 you're good to go right like mm -hmm. is it a pass fail are we gonna do anything more detailed than that and are the game developers gonna allow us to like run the test with the type of tools we want without having to utilize this like can we just run it kind of locally and and run the types of tests that we're that we're looking to find um, I, I think it'll be interesting like we have we have some VR builds planned I know we have some mm -hmm. discussions to have about VR builds still uh, and I think for the rest of March and beyond, people that, that demo this for the first time at a friend's house and go, well, I have to have that. I need to upgrade my machine. Mm -hmm. That's going to be uh, a very interesting pathway for people. I had a meeting with NVIDIA at CES, and I was like, what is it like being in the GPU business at the launch of VR? It just grins. Oh, yeah. It, oh, like, absolutely. Is, it turns out this is a really great time to be in PC hardware, yeah. and to be offering GPUs, and to have different options. It's everyone who is enthusiastic about VR is upgrading right now. Yep. They're getting their rig ready. They're making sure they hit this, the specs. We have it, it, solid information on what you need. Yeah, it was like when 4K displays started to come out, mm -hmm. right? And, and NVIDIA and AMD loved it, because this is how we can sell high-margin, high-dollar parts. VR, I think,
be more impactful on the GPU side of things than 4K was. I still think 4K is just started starting out, right? Mm -hmm. um, but the demands of this, and especially since the hardware vendors themselves, HTC, Oculus, Sam well, not Samsung, I guess on the PC side, but they're very adamant about you need to have good hardware right. to get that done. And they're, they're not messing around. Like, you have, I forget what the exact resolution the Vive is running at. Um, I don't remember either. It's, it's pretty high. It's high. But you have to render the scene for both eyes in that resolution at 90 frames a second. Yep. So you're looking at a high-res image rendered stereoscopically, pushed to two different eyes, 90 frames. Yeah. So if you play a game on like a 3D display, you're looking at the same kind of amount of performance because mm -hmm. you have to render each frame twice. Right. So there's things they can do in the drivers, and I'm sure there's things that in companies like NVIDIA are, are looking at terms to kind of cheat frames or something. But for right now, you need to throw so much power at this yeah. to hit that 90 frames They're a They're doing things like, uh, I'm trying to figure out how I can explain this, multi, uh, what is it, multi-port? Multi-viewport rendering, where basically the center of your screen maintains its highest resolution for rendering because that's where you're focusing, but the peripheral, because your peripheral vision is yeah, already bad. Yeah, foveated rendering. They, they kind of lessen the amount of work required on the edges saving you horsepower, allowing you to get higher frame rates. And that's a, a trick that NVIDIA has been working on, trying to get input. I know it's implemented in the Unreal Engine, but there, I don't know else. There are uh, hardware that's out there for demo that people are, are trying to get off the ground where there's an inward facing camera and it, it tracks your eye. It's called mm -hmm. foveated rendering. And like you say, it only renders where your eyeball's looking. Right. Because in, it's, it's so interesting when hardware and software starts really digging into how your brain works. When I'm looking at you, you're in high resolution. There's a box behind you. I can't read it. Right. Your eye's taking in all that information, but that's very low res back there. And then I can look over and see what it is. Yep. It's a vinyl for Star Wars, the Rebel Mission to Ord Mantel. Yeah. That's a thing that exists. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the software is hoping to take advantage of that. You're looking is incredibly high resolution, and then if you look over there, it dumps the resolution and it operates fast enough that you get a lot of that performance back, and it's invisible to your eye. It just feels like how you I saw perceive reality. Not that type of thing. They didn't change rendering, but uh, at CES there was a demo. What was it to Toby T I I did eye tracking on a laptop? Yeah, it, there's a little bar. Yeah, 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 and they showed like it. They didn't change rendering, but but uh, uh, the aperture of the light would change based on if you're looking into the dark side of the scene or the light side of the scene. And it was really cool and it worked very quickly. I could see it being applied to rendering resolution just as easily. And I've used, there's demos on the Toby technology where it actually will capture the gameplay and then show you where you were looking, which I think is absolutely fascinating. Good. There's like a little, there's good. like a, two little red circles. Yeah. So that when you're like, if you're playing StarCraft Two, you can see like what people are looking at and what they're focused on. That's really interesting. And you don't realize until you look at something like that how much your eyes dart around at the screen. It feels like you can just relax and play a video game, where in reality, your brain and your eyes are constantly like re right. in jerking really quick motions. Huh. It's fascinating to see. Uh, if anybody watching has questions for Ben, you can put them in the chat here. Uh, just tag me in the question so I can, it'll show up on my screen and I'll, I'll keep track of those. Uh, what about the Gear VR? We have one of those right here. So, I'm just gonna. Just <laughs> it off the side of the table. Um, so my, my initial gut instinct for this, and you kind of already have tried to correct me on this, is that this doesn't offer a good enough experience for somebody's first VR experience as opposed to somebody trying to use something like the HTC Vive. It's it, it's really fascinating to me that we have tiers of VR, right? Like as someone who's followed VR for, you know, over 10 years professionally in my whole life just as someone who thinks this tech is cool and saw Lawnmower Man as a kid and had a <laughs> that was their formative experience. Yeah. It, it's fascinating to me that we can sit here and talk about all these different forms of hardware. So, like, the entry level is the cardboard, right? Those right. little goofy things that Google gives out. And, like, I think there's even one in a Happy Meal now. Yes, I saw that. Or you I can, like, <laughs> turn your fry box into one. The Happy Meal turn the uh, twists and fold, and then you put your phone in it, and there you go, 3D. Absolutely. McDonald's it, can do it. 
Coca-Cola has one where if you get like the 12 the pack of soda cans, you can fold it down. Um, it's neat. It, it like cardboard to me feels like a parlor trick. Yeah. Oh, and we have one over here. Like oh, they're yeah. literally just little, little cardboard viewers. And people are like, what do you think of these? I don't, I don't like them. It's like it uses nothing but the sensors in your phone. Right. So it's very high latency. Um, it's relatively low resolution. If you thought you looked weird with that, imagine walking around just holding this and, to your face. And yeah, and you can't. There's no straps. It's meant to be like a Viewmaster experience. In fact, Viewmaster has a toy for kids that <laughs> operates as a cardboard viewer. I have one, and it's goofy in my collection of weird-ass cardboard <laughs> um, implementations. So when you, go, when you go from that, which I don't think is a great VR experience, even though Google is clearly invested, I think we're going to see a much bigger platform for them from them in, in custom cardboard. hardware. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then the step up from that is Gear VR, which is, you know, it's powered by your phone. So you just snap your phone in there for the screen and everything, and you're good to go. That's the entirety of the experience. It's untethered, so you can... That I like a lot. Yeah, so you can, when you're wearing it, you can spin 360 degrees. You can do the past few cameras around. It's very comfortable. It's a it's a hundred dollar device if you already have the phone, right? And of right, course, right. it uses Samsung, some Samsung's flagship phones from 2015 up. So okay. like the S6, the S6 Edge, the latest Galaxy. The it, new they they just announced uh, the S7 and the S7 Edge, right. and you get one of these for free mm -hmm. if you pre-order. I think is it through March, something like that. Uh, well, it comes out on the 13th, I think. Okay. So if you pre-order, you have to pre-order before. If you pre-order, you get this for free, which is. And that's obviously a, do that. that. Yeah, a great... Like, like if you're going to get a phone... Samsung, I think, actually makes great Android handsets. I, I really like the Galaxy line. I like a giant phone <laughs> that I can, like, read on and do the whole thing. So do that, because this is an incredible VR experience. The latency is way lower with the cardboard, because if, you're, if you don't do any of the deals and you buy one for $100, people are like, it's a plastic shell. And that's, that's kind of right. It's a plastic shell with the optics in it. Mm -hmm. But... Motion tracking hardware is in here and not your phone. Okay. Because your phone's uh, gyroscopes and accelerometers are good for like you know moving your phone around and the little you know haptic things that Android and iPhone handsets do. Right. They're not up to the demands of workable VR. Okay. So when you play this and you get way better tracking hardware in the gear and you put it on and you move it that around. That makes sense. Okay. With a way lower latency with the all the better tracking it's a way better vr experience it's if google cardboard is at like a two this is like a seven and then like vive is like a 10. okay the, the problem is there's no depth sensing so if i'm wearing this Moving and i try to forward lean back, forward doesn't... it doesn't do anything it's just it's pure movement okay um and there's obviously no hand controllers yet everything is done through either a bluetooth controller or there's a little i don't know if you can see this there's a swipe touchpad on the side oh, and yes. almost all of those, it's just like a tap to select something or you move it back and forth and up and down to select things okay and th there's a lot of games where it's purely gaze based, where you just look at a button for like a second and then select it. It's kind of like the X connect, yeah. hold your hand there. But, it, but it works is the difference. <laughs> um, so I think the Gear VR, if you have a, a flagship Samsung handset, there's no reason not to buy it. There's great games for it. It's super fun to like, there's an Oculus video app where you can stream Twitch on like an iMac screen. So you're in like this amazing movie theater by yourself and you can watch any Twitch stream you want. Yeah. Um, That's pretty good. It's super fun to watch. I like, remember when I, when I borrowed, I think I borrowed this from you yeah. when I had uh, the Note 4 and there was like a movie theater viewer where like it had a red curtain that mm -hmm. comes away and you're like, you're sitting in seats yeah. essentially. And you know. And you can, now you can rent movies through there. You can sideload your own. So you can rip like your copy of Jurassic World, put it in here, and be like watching it on a plane. Have you ever done that? Have you ever used this on a plane? Yes, it is. Um, I did it once, and I learned that <laughs> etiquette and virtual reality is something <laughs> like no one is familiar with, and it's super strange. And you figure out the rules really quickly. Yeah. So on a plane, if you're if you're wearing a virtual reality headset, be aware that no one's going to know what it is. They don't know what you're looking at. And if you're playing a very active game, uh, if you think about a, a plane seat, you're basically They're narrow. sharing elbow space. Right. Imagine trying to read a magazine and the person next to you is doing this. 
<laughs> you're leaning behind and trying to and playing like a fast-paced action game. It's yeah. rude. It doesn't work. It makes other people very uncomfortable, as I learned very quickly. So, like, things like the movie viewing, where you can just, like, sit back and you're only moving your head a little bit. Yeah. It's more comfortable. Sure. People with that. So, I've, I've watched movies. You can hold the button and select a pass-through camera that uses the built-in camera so you can see through it. And I talked to the flight attendant <laughs> through that way. And I was like, yeah, can I, can I just get a, a, a can of ginger ale? They had no idea, like, the idea That's that hilarious. you That's can awesome. see them, but they can't see your eyes is so unsettling. Yeah. Or, like, when I was wearing it, and I saw the flight attendant look at me for, like, five whole seconds trying to figure out, do I pretend, do I act as if this person is sleeping? Right, And, right. like, don't rouse them because they're, or do I, like, tap them on the sure, shoulder? and sure. I, Yeah. Or like this is there's no protocol for this stuff. That's pretty good in public yet. So um, a lot of people, we were at GDC I think last year, and a lot of people had Gear VRs, and people aren't shy about coming up and asking to use it. Like there's a, you see people like talking. It's like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna go over there. It's like, hey, do you mind if I like put my face in there? There's like a, <laughs> a high level of curiosity about the yeah. tech. Um, you will be made fun of if you do virtual reality in public because you look. Really ridiculous. You look goofy. Right. Absolutely. So it's it's super fun to take this stuff out to those uh, situations. Have and you ever like walked through the mall with on with the pass through? Oh dear God, no. Just and, to and see. the pass through is is mono, so you can't see depth. So it's <laughs> ah, kind of it's right. kind of fun if you're right. like looking for your popcorn or your your soda or your beer or something. But like if you try to walk around, you're gonna trip on things. <laughs> and everyone is always like, "How have you? Okay." I I was like, oh, it's, it's the bathroom question. Uh, They're like, yeah, yeah, have you ever been, like, VRing in the bathroom? And, I mean, sure. for science, yeah, you have to try it. Yeah. It is, your body will not, let's say the word vacate. <laughs> right. If you think, if your brain thinks you're in a movie theater and other people might uh, walk in, it's like, no, I'm sorry. I, I cannot. You know what? I can't have a bowel movement here. Good on the body. Yeah. Good. It's just like, this doesn't seem right. Good on the body. And, yeah. <laughs> And it's it's like those you know are what? the weird things you discover. That inherent mental capability is what keeps us all from embarrassing ourselves <laughs> right. every day, right? But it's, I really no, I should I, wait. I can't. I should wait. I, I can't. <laughs> so it's it's all of these weird situations with the virtual reality oh, that you man. get when it's portable that are just so odd, and people are kind of learning. As they go. So yeah, somebody in the chat said that they needed like a do not disturb light, like a blinking light. Something or something that says like, I imagine in your house, have people come up behind you when you're on VR mm -hmm. and startled you or yeah, you're swinging around and you knock a kid out or something with a controller? And we use, when I'm like in the Vive and I'm, I'm playing with friends or family and we're taking turns with it, I use like heavy duty ear cans that block everything out. So you are completely immersed. Right. And as it stands, there is no good way to get someone's attention. And hmm. it's really hard to describe how off-putting it is to completely believe you're in a situation and feel a ghost grab you. Like, imagine right now someone grabbing your shoulders and putting you a step backward. Right. You would, you would panic. And that happens every time someone tries to get you out of virtual reality. There are... The Gear VR actually links up... If your phone is linked up to your Facebook accounts you'll get notifications that way. So if I'm in the Gear VR and I'm watching a movie, I just tell my wife to get on Facebook Messenger. Yeah. And it'll like, a picture of her will pop up and it'll say, hey, can you take out the garbage? Wait, and it's, it. <laughs> yeah. And then, it, and then you can, in the final, the retail version of the Vive will... Um, I thought they said it was going to support notifications. Yeah. I haven't, they haven't pushed this out to people with pre's yet, but okay. it's going to launch with the hard It'll it, like, Bluetooth, sync, Bluetooth sync with your phone, and it yeah. will send notifications about emails and stuff like that. And so text you, can, messages. you can get text messages yeah. or calls, and like I yeah, could that's what see he did tell me that. Yeah. Being in a situation where someone is like five feet away watching you in VR, and the easiest thing to do is just text and <laughs> be like, "Hey, jump out." Hey, uh, hello, hello. Yeah. <laughs> and um, there's a front-facing camera on the pre that's going to be on the retail version, where if you it's not functional yet, but if you tap the bottom button twice, mm -hmm. it brings up like a Tron version of your surroundings so you can look around and it, uh, it fakes 3D really well. Okay. I remember... Because uh, this, the Vive has a front-facing yeah. 
The Rift currently does not. No, it doesn't. So this is the only one that offers that capability. Okay. And it's really, currently they have the she the chaperone program. If you go to the edge of your track space, you'll get just a very basic wireframe wall. Like grid of... Yeah, yeah, it kind of fades in and you're like, okay, I have to turn around and then it fades out move away right. from it. So there will be in the retail version even more ways to contact someone in okay. VR. Let me see the, the box you brought there. This is the, what do they call this? This is, this is the Lighthouse tracking unit. And you get two of these with, um, this is the Vive Pre version of it. So the retail version will probably look a little bit different. You plug it into the power outlet. Um, there's, there's like a, a connector that connects both that we needed for the dev kit that is not necessary on right. this. Um, so you just plug this into the wall and you have to have one on each of the opposite walls. So um, almost like a, if you cut a diagonal through a box, yeah, essentially. Th those okay. are where your um, sensors need to be. And there is a standard mount on the back Quarter and the bottom. On it. Yep. Yeah. So I just went onto a photography website mm -hmm. and bought uh, seven foot just speaker stands, basically. Yeah, with like, the, with uh, like those light pole looking things exactly. as well. Exactly, yeah. with, with the mounting hardware. It was $20 for both of them. And then I just screw it in. I ratchet it up, point it down a little bit. Um, hmm. With the pre, you get a variety of mounting mechanisms, including yes. like 3M tape, where you can drill it directly into your wall. But and I think they said like the configuration of this is completely, it does it all on its own now. I think um, I was talking with, with uh, Ryan at HCC, he's talking about you can put one on a bookshelf and you can put one up there. They mm -hmm. don't have to be the same heights anymore. Right. They self-calibrate, mm -hmm. um, which I, I think if, if I were to pick one kind of prevailing difference between the two PC platforms, the Vive and the, and the Rift, it would be that people assume that the, that the Vive is going to require more space. Mm -hmm. That you, this is a room-based VR, whereas the Rift is sitting in your chair or standing in a, in a specific location VR. Now, my understanding is the Vive will work just fine if you're standing or sitting in a chair, mm -hmm. right? Like, it will function the same. You just get the capability to expand into whole room yeah, VR, and right. and my space is like nine feet by nine feet. The okay. maximum is fifteen by fifteen. Okay. Um, I just happen to have the, you know, amount of space you get for living in Ohio. That's kind of one <laughs> one of the trade offs. Yeah, well, the same thing in Kentucky, right? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like I want to block off a whole room for VR, and it will cost way less than people who live in California. Like, yeah, I, I send pictures of my setup to other people who work for Vox Media who live in like New York and San Francisco, and. They think the most science fiction aspect of it is the size of my basement. Nice. <laughs> it's like, people shouldn't be allowed to have that. What do you, do you just have tennis matches? I'm like, no, well, Ohio. Basements. We, we, get, we get space. Yeah. So, and, and I talk to a lot of developers, <laughs> and even on games where you can walk around a lot, most of them are offering versions of the game or the ability to play in like a one meter by one meter. Yeah. Which okay. is like, some people call it phone booth scale VR. I just call it standing VR. Yeah. If you can stand up, hold your hand out, and spin 360 degrees without knocking anything down, you can play probably 80% of these games. Okay. And then as you get more space, it just gets a little cooler because you can walk around right. and... Right. There's a game called Hover Junkers where you have like this giant floating warship and set up like defenses around the whole ship and then you have to actually walk around and when someone's firing at you you have to duck down and then you kind of have to reach around with your gun and return fire or <laughs> pop up and shoot both guns and then pop down and it uses the entirety of the space yeah so when someone's attacking you from the rear of your ship and you have to actually take like two big steps and then dive for cover and then pop up with your shotguns it feels so physical and immediate, and it's so, hmm. it's so affecting. You feel like you're in like a Hollywood-style shootout. And then since it affects the head and the hands, and they have this great animation back end. So like if I pick, I'm the character of the robot. Everything is animated on the fly. So when I like celebrate with this, like my <laughs> robot moves exactly <laughs> like I would. You can give it like a little cabbage patch or... Um, the the push to talk for the the voiceover IP is you squeeze the controller, yeah. and that also makes you do the middle finger. <laughs> so whenever you're talking to someone, you're like, "Hey, what are you doing over there?" Nice. Hey, what's going on over here? It's like it, they link that That's just pretty funny. just for fun That's because good. the nonverbal stuff is so important in that game. It's interesting. Uh, 
think about the pricing of these units? Vive being seven eighty nine, Rift five ninety nine. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've talked about the Gear VR and it kind of being a good value for somebody if you already have the phone. If you don't have the phone, it's not a good value yeah. to just like do that for that purpose. I'm, unless you're really into VR, you yeah. might want to stay away from Samsung phones just for Gear VR. Right. That being said, I think they make a really good phone and the VR is a selling point. Right. So I'm not going to judge people who decide to go that route. Sure. But if, if you had a decision between an LG and a Samsung, like, well, I kind of want to try Gear VR, then right. boom, done. Especially that's, since that's what they want. there's so many giveaways with it. Yeah. Um, I would love to see, I want to see Google actually get into the hardware and offer a Gear VR headset. One of the things that I've, I've talked to Samsung and I've talked to Oculus, it's possible to do very, very good VR through the Gear VR because Samsung gave Oculus access like all the way down into the phone. Mm. So when Carmack was coding the SDK for the Gear VR, he can kind of, he has way more access to the hardware than most people than who make dev. apps do. Right. And in fact, Carmack said one of the challenges is like, we can get great graphics, but I will physically melt your phone in like 30 seconds. <laughs> like they have to be so aware of power and heat before they kill it. Right. And, but they have the ability to do that sort of thing because they're so close to the hardware. I would love for Google to create a Gear VR alternative and give those hooks into Android in the next update. So you don't have to wait for companies like Samsung to say, okay, okay that's okay. It's it's Android-wide that you have a little bit more hooks in the, uh, the processor and the GPU and sure. everything. Um, but yeah, that's pricing is an issue. If you don't have a phone, this isn't a $100 piece of hardware. This is right. an $800 piece of hardware right. starting from scratch. Right. You happen to get a nice phone with it, right. but it's an $800 solution. Vibe is eight hundred dollars. Rift is six hundred dollars. This, and you need a very expensive PC to run it. This is not inexpensive or mainstream technology yet because right. the initial ask is is so high. Yeah. But when I invite friends and family over to try the Vive and like give them a really good demo and let them adjust it and let them get comfortable. Like tilt brush, which is it's like a three D thing where you paint with it's light. It's so cool, it's and I have no artistic capability at all. Yeah, and it's great. And you can the the other thing I, I just realized you can share, you can upload the things you create in dot tilt files. So oh, like really? when like professional artists create these amazing, and it's not even a picture; it's in three D, so it's a scene. Someone who does games did a, a log cabin. So I downloaded the tilt file, loaded up the program, and I could walk around their log cabin. That's it was cool. an environment. Um, so when I show people things like this, and they go, oh, $800, like, I'm not, eh, that's a little bit too much. I, I think what HTC Valve and Oculus or Facebook want to do is plant those seeds. If you're into things like Tilt Brush and into the Vive or into the Gear VR, and you go, this is going to be great when the hardware is less expensive or I can get a Rift for $300. They want to make sure that when they're able to get the price to mainstream and the cost of the GPU hitting that spec goes down, yep. they have you. I think 2016 is going to be a lot of enthusiasts and press and early adopters jumping into VR, mm -hmm. inviting friends and family over to try it, and then later on when the price goes down then kind of that mainstream circle that seems to make sense I, and i that's that's how when, when people have complained about the pricing of these items i consider it like it's a super high-end gpu if you wait two years all of the technology in that product will be in a modest cost thing and that's the that's kind of the price you pay to be the bleeding edge guy whether that be on displays or pc hardware or tvs or Consumer electronics, whatever it happens to be. Um, and so I wasn't shocked by the $600 and $800 price tag necessarily, especially since I have done the demos, mm -hmm. many of them, right, and seen it. So this, is, this, is actually, really cool. this is actually really, really good, right? <laughs> uh, so when I, when I went on and did the pre-order for the Vive, I was like, yep, okay. Obviously, we do it anyway because cost of doing business sure. for what we're doing, but that would still be a thing and that I would And it's so, it's so hard to explain it to people who haven't tried it because $800 is a ton of money. The, the $1,000 PC on up is a ton of money. This is not inexpensive stuff. But on the flip side, it's like I go downstairs every night and basically go into my holodeck <laughs> where I get to shoot zombies in the head with a gun that feels very real. Yeah. It's a holodeck. If you just walked up to someone without mentioning Vive or virtual reality and said, how much 
pay for a holodeck. It, I'd pay it, more it, than $1,000. Right. Yeah. It's like, yeah. once people start seeing what it can do and how impressive it is, yeah. whether it's the Rift or the Vive or the gear, they're going to they're gonna buy it. Like, I think the experience really sells itself. The price does need to come down. It will. It does and it will. It, it will. Uh, I'm going to get you out of here on this. What so far in any platform or whatever has been your favorite VR experience that you've had? Oh, God. And I know that's putting you on the spot, but there's there's so many good ones, and I forget who it was on Twitter. They said they have a laugh test in VR, because when you're really really impressed and you think and you're filled with wonder at something, this is very strange. You laugh. Mm -hmm. So when you go into a haunted house and you're really really scared and your adrenaline spikes and you go out, you laugh. When you go to Disney World and you walk in and you see the big tower, and if you're a Disney geek like I am, you laugh kind of overcome a little bit when you get into experiences that are otherworldly you release the tension by laughing so when someone plays a demo and they laugh it it won that's like okay they're in it they're like so overcome they laugh it's right. the laugh test and i think tilt brush does that that sense of like you, you are painting with light and it does have an ambient lighting effect where it shines on things and you can create things that feel physical and then walk around it um hover junkers where you play online for like an hour and you're piloting this like floating ship in a mad max world and then you to reload your guns you have to dump the revolver do a circle motion on the trackpad to put a, a round in each chamber and then you flip it <laughs> to close it and then once you get that where you're dual wielding and you can do it quickly and then you flip and then you pop out and offload on someone yeah it feels real so when you watch movies and you're like how well would i actually do in this situation <laughs> And how creative could I be with popping up from the side or even laying on your back and shooting like behind you and towards something? Right. That, and it's interesting where even holding your hand out ready, looking for a target for like five minutes, these aren't heavy control. Your arm gets tired. Yeah, yeah. And then if you put your arms down, you're not as ready and your reaction time goes up. So your physical limits actually become gameplay. Oh, no. <laughs> when, you, when you pop up and down, I'm sitting here doing like, oh, I'm doing squats. Like, I can feel it in my leg muscles. So I think tilt brush is the best thing to show people early. Mm -hmm. And things like hover where you're playing a game, it's online, and it's really intense. That shows just how much interaction you can get with the motion controls and the lighthouse setup in your house, and it's very cool. It's so impressive. Very cool. So, if people want to follow you and find the stuff that you're writing about VR, where should they go? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at, at Ben Kachera. That's K U C H E R A. Ben, how it sounds. All my stories pop up at, at Polygon. All right, sounds good. So we're gonna have uh, we're gonna take a break here. We're gonna swap back over to Sebastian here in a bit and get an update. Looks like he's made progress. Uh, and I'll be back here. We'll move on to the next. We've got a contest here coming up as well. Ben, thank you for coming out. Thank you for, me. for, for driving down to the state of Kentucky. <laughs> absolutely. For an event. And then we'll, <laughs> we'll see you probably later this week as well to work on some other stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So, it's going to cool. be great. Cool. Thanks. Right. Thanks so much. All right, Sebastian. You're up. I'm on. Should I unmute my mic? You should unmute your mic. Ken, can you mute our mics? Can you see it? Is this a good view? Yeah, we got your overhead. No, uh, you need to move the mic or the mic uh, table down here. Help him with that. The camera? As you can see, the, the PC pretty much is built on one tray, which is completely removable. I have it away from the uh, innards of the table right now. Power supply, motherboard, system components. The only thing I haven't done yet is add a CPU cooler. Video card, as you can see, mounted alongside the motherboard and attached via this ribbon connector, which uh, is attached down here. But the whole system is just on this uh, basically like an open test bench concept. And then uh, on the back, you can see I have a mess going on here, but you have infinite ability to organize cables. And it comes with some of these stick-on 
little pieces that you can use. They're uh, the cable guides. There's one that's already attached on one end of it, but you can put these wherever you want. Guide cables around, whatever works for your build. So I actually find this very convenient. I am personally a huge fan of any kind of motherboard tray that's removable, and they're very rare, at least for any of the cases that I've reviewed. I have yet to review a case that had one. The last case I owned, well, I take it back. I think I've reviewed one, but the last case I owned that had it was an older Silverstone case, and it was like the most convenient thing. You built the whole system, and then you put the tray back in, and this is actually a little bit nicer because you can put all the components in, you know, have everything in, actually, this is basically ready to run, including the I.O., with the exception of that cooler. Because the, uh, like the front panel stuff, which should be like the power button, the HD uh, LEDs and reset, USB 3.0, there's actually two on this motherboard. They're all uh, right here on the same tray. So this USB is going to be active as soon as I power it on. I can turn the system on and off with this button. The audio works. I've got audio uh, output. So, you know, this optionally allows you to put a uh, slot load optical drive if you wanted to, if you had like a laptop drive around that you wanted to use for that. But you could have this completely assembled and organized before you ever dropped it back from the table, which is actually underneath where I'm working right now on a pad here, not to scratch the glass. But basically, I'm just going to drop this in, and my last step is just going to be connecting any of the included and there's actually four on each side of this table. And to help you out with uh, connecting that many fans, even on a huge motherboard like this, I don't think I'm going to have anywhere near as many fan headers as I need. They include several little uh, power adapters. So you can add more with just like a regular Molex, like four pin connector. There's four of these in the, in the bag of accessories. So they, they were really thoughtful in including a lot of kind of the odds and ends pieces you might need. Like I just have one little SSD installed here and there's like these little pieces that allow you to just slide. Like you attach them to the bottom of a drive, whether it's 2.5 or 3.5 inches, and then you kind of stick it in here and slide it down and locks it into place. And you can put, as you can see, a whole row of drives here. And there's also uh, drive cages that you can attach to add even more drives. So I'm just doing like flat mount here. But it's, uh, so far it feels great. Like this piece here, which I'm guessing is also aluminum, feels like aluminum. It is Lian Lee. It's reinforced. Doesn't really have too much wobble to it. It feels pretty good. And it's not heavy. So you can actually pick it up pretty easily. So I'm gonna get this back into the table now. So you're looking at the surface of the right here, which is that big piece of tempered glass we showed on the stream earlier. This thing is thick and heavy. That's a good thing. Very good thing for glass. Then our giant enclosure here with four you have four 128 millimeter fans on each side. And it looks like these are positioned to blow in from this side and out the other side. So we will get some nice airflow going through here. And there are filters on both sides. There's a small screen filter on the underside of each side. So there's air is kind of drawn up from below the table and then across to your components and then down the other side. Of course, now I have to negotiate all of these uh, case fans.
a fan controller would have been much appreciated here. It's almost essential if you have this many fans, especially considering these are not PWM fans. These just have three pin fan headers, so you'd need some kind of control, whether it's motherboard or otherwise. Unless these are very, very quiet. These could be like 600 RPM fans for all I know. kind of hoping that these would be LED fans, and I'm not sure that they are, because it would be really cool to see under the glass the system. So this is some, definitely something you'd want to add lighting to, I think. The strategy here is just to push the wires out of the way for now until I get this board in here, which I actually probably could have done without all of that extra work. Okay. And then it connects down with uh, four thumb screws. Now this is just metal on metal, but I think just being held down firmly, plus the fact that each of these thumb screws has a little rubber washer on it will prevent any kind of vibration concerns. The biggest concern with this particular build is this giant GPU, which is so long and heavy that it was sagging down and hitting the base of this tray here. So I actually just put a piece of plastic underneath it, which keeps it level, and this has a solid backplate on it, so that wasn't an issue up against the PCB. They did include some rubber bumpers in with the accessory pack, so you could use a couple of those under the GPU, actually. I used them all under the PSU. Could barely reach my fingers in there, so I just used a screwdriver, but the system is basically done. Now I just got to put in the uh, cooler, and I'm kind of wondering, you know, since there's already 480 millimeters of fan on each side, I'm going to have to probably remove fans to get our uh, radiator in here. Should I just use this open? Cooler or one yeah. of the sealed ones? If it's got all the parts in it, go for it. Does it appear to? Yeah, if the hardware's in here, yeah. So and some uh, motherboard parts. Well, you know. It has more parts than I need. That's a good sign. Uh, good. I am. Is my microphone correctly placed? Look at that, another one marked off. That was good, that was a good talk. Sebastian, I got some bad news for you. What? That has a back plate on it. And you have the motherboard screwed in now. All right. <laughs> Fortunately, so I can unscrew it with four thumb screws and pull the whole thing yeah. out again. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Sebastian, why don't you pause on that and go ahead and sit down at the table and we'll get ready for the Q&A session. Okay. Just pull Let's up a chair. Is there a spare laptop around? Okay, so I get to just use my phone for the chat. You don't need the chat. I'll look at the chat. I have it pulled up. I just don't want to be, oh, look, look okay. like I'm just... No, no, no. Hey, buddy. If look I look like I'm looking at my phone, I'm not just texting. I'm actually on IRC on just, my phone. Just look disinterested. It's okay. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't mind. It's 12 hours of streaming. We're going to look disinterested at some point. I feel like it looks rude. 
here, Ken. Uh, don't break that cardboard. <laughs> so I say, hey, I should get some headphones, but I probably don't need headphones. Let's see, what do we got? So we've got a giveaway on my schedule and then a QA session. Who's gonna answer the questions? I'll have chat up too. We're gonna answer we're gonna answer questions? Uh huh. Ken, you got a pop. I'm going on what, three hours on this battery? Should I switch switch it out or go we'll wired? Do it after this. Okay. Yeah, we'll do it after that. What's what's the battery indicator say on it? Two. Is that on the screen? Yeah. It's a little bars. It keeps on moving. One, two, three. Oh wait, it's flashing. It's flashing. Oh, it's dying. We should probably change okay. that then. Yeah. <laughs> Mute him and then uh, take him to the batteries. So guys, the answer was you had zero bars. The oh, PC per telethon marathon. That's right. We're getting set up here, guys. Uh, if you don't uh, haven't entered into the con you need to do that right now. PCPer.com slash S O L contest. <laughs> it's not <laughs> PCPer.com slash S O L contest. You can go there, you enter into the contest. And if you don't win, then you're um your S O L. Then you're streaming out loud. Then you're streaming out loud, yeah. right, exactly. Uh, and obviously, of course. Um, one of the reasons we're doing the stream today is to get you guys to sign up for our Patreon. That's at patreon.com slash pcper. If you like what we're doing, if you think what we're doing is interesting and fun, uh, the interview we just did with Ben Kacher from Polygon, a lot of cool stuff there about VR. He's super excited about it. He makes his enthusiasm kind of like rubs uh, off. Oh. Uh, he's actually going to be here, I think, later this week or next week. We're going to record some videos that Polygon's going to host. We're going to record some videos here about hardware and stuff that is going into those builds. What do you need? Alan, talk. I'm a talking. I'm a talking to you. I'm looking a little low on the thingy. There we go. Yep. That's probably good. On the thingy? Hey. On the uh, thingy, Majik. And is Sebastian unmuted too? I'm unmuted, yes. Are you? Okay. Am I? I don't know. Are you? Is my battery really good? Okay. Does it say mute on the screen? No. Hmm. I don't think so. It gives me a... Uh... Did you mute him on the board, though? I do not. Okay. Can you hear me, though? Uh, you're low. I don't know if you're pay being picked up by someone else's mic or... Say something. Hey, what's up? Oh, his bar is really low on the... on that. That's weird. Did, was it flashing when you saw it before? Was no. he in a menu? That's weird. Right. I, I only saw it with Let me two see bars. the mic pack real fast. You, I think when you might have been in a menu and then adjusted your. Yeah, it's like uh, his mic pack gain as well. I need more phantom power. Is that better, Ken? I, well, yes. How, how's the volume, Ken? That's good. How do I sound? I think you had actually sent the sensitivity down to minus 20 instead of minus 10. Oh. I'm sorry. That might have been my doing. All right, so we're going to do a giveaway, and then we're going to do a Q&A. So if you have qu questions that require answers, this is a, pro this is a part <laughs> for you to come talk to us. Uh, so you can hit us up in the chat room at pcper.com slash live. If you're sure anything like that to use the chat, so all that will work just fine. Uh, and we'll follow uh, the chat and get some questions in. Uh, and talk to you uh, for, you know, we got like a 30-minute session here at Q&A. And what three, four better people could you have? Because, I mean, Josh, Jeremy, eh, they don't Scott, know. Who cares whatever. about those guys? Shh, they're not. I need, to, uh, I need to quit the chat from across the room from my phone. All right, there we go. Josh knows too much and makes me look bad, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get him out of here. All right, so we're going to pick. Uh, let me see what our contest is up for here. I believe we are on to contest number two, which is a Corsair Void RGB headset. A Corsair M65 RGB mouse, a Corsair Strafe RGB keyboard, MX Silent. I think Ken's looking for those. <laughs> he might be. Uh, I don't know where they're at, Ken. They're he's, in a long box. He's running laps around yeah, the room. No one is running camera. the show right now. Uh, and an MSI Thunderstorm mouse pad. And we already have all these things boxed up together. Somewhere? I don't know. They're in the we office. We still right? have them, for sure. We, we made even the, if we don't have... We made the fatal error of, Even if we um, don't actually have uh, the yeah, props we here. Made that fatal we cleaned and organized. Cleaning. So let's draw a winner for this stuff here. Uh, yes, I know the contest is for to draw one anyway. Uh, how about we pick Devin C. Devin C. from Bakersfield, California has won the Corsair uh, headset, mouse, and keyboard combo along with an MSI Thunderstorm mouse. 
Congratulations. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Hopefully you guys uh, uh, are entered into the contest. We have, I think, four more contests to go throughout the day. So clearly uh, there, there's reasons to sign up. And clearly you want to hang out and watch the stream anyway because we have all kinds of cool crap happening. If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting in-depth technical content by contributing at patreon.com slash pcper.